one of the things that's a little bit hard to understand is how this fundamental I amness, your fundamental authentic transpersonal self, is not dependent upon objects. Any object you can see is an object. It's not the subject. It's not the pure self. So you want to try to get a sense of I amness stripped of objects and realize that if all objects are gone, there is still I amness. Now, usually the way this happens is a difficult process of training where you actually, for two or three years, have to learn to get into meditative states where you suspend all objects, either by concentrative modes or modes of insight awareness that go actually into the unmanifest. So you are in an unmanifest state of vast consciousness with no objects arising, and there's still I amness, radiant, open, empty I amness. So the, what we're going to do and walk through a little bit on Thursday is, is this kind of exercise, and I'll show you just a little bit of how it works. So you have a sense of I amness right now, and if you think about five minutes ago, what was actually present in your experience five minutes ago that's present now? I amness. It's I amness, wasn't it, five minutes ago. So how about five hours ago? I amness, yeah. But where were the objects five hours ago? Not, not here, none of this. But there was I amness. So what was present five years ago? I amness. It's ever present. No objects at all. If you actually feel that I amness, it's present now. It was present a minute ago. I amness was present a minute ago. Five minutes ago, I amness. And the objects are all changed. And that's what's so important. What you are is not an object. And that means any thoughts that you have, that's not what you are. Those are objects. And those change. The thoughts you have now, the same thoughts you had five minutes ago? No. Do you have I amness? Yes. No. So interiorly, your body's an object. Your feelings are objects. Your thoughts are objects. You can feel the self-contraction. That's an object. What's aware of that? I amness. The pure self. So what was present five years ago? <clears throat> I amness. What was present 50 years ago? Yeah, I amness. What was present five centuries ago? Show me your original face, the face you had before your parents were born. I amness. No objects at all. That fundamental ongoing I amness. What was present five millennia ago? Yeah, before Abraham was, I am. The I am is the only thing that exists. Everything else is a modification, a ripple, and a rising. And suffering and bondage is the misidentification of I amness with an object. You identify with yourself, your ego, your body. And that just is the world of objects. They come, they stay a bit, they torture you, and they leave. That's the path of objects. I am this is ongoing, unchanging, ever present. Five millennia ago, there is only I am this. Before the Big Bang, there is only I am this. It's the great unborn treasure. There's your fundamental self and condition. And so as you get that sense of ongoing I amness, it's no objects whatsoever. And the perfect practice, the fundamental practice, is simply recognizing this I amness, which is the name of God. And as long as you're simply, you recognize it right now. You're aware of I am? Of course you are. And that is absolutely infallible. You don't, don't complicate it. Don't, if you're aware of I am, that's it. So the practice is you rest in big mind. You rest in I am and go on about you. I'm you're perfectly aware of that. You can do this and you can do that. And then all of, at some point you'll be distracted. You'll forget I am this. You'll forget big mind. The moment that you are recognized you're distracted and you recognize who is distracted. I am distracted. The moment you recognize distraction, you are instantly and automatically returned to view. You are instantly and automatically reinstalled in I am this. With no, it's absolutely infallible. It's that simple. So moment to moment, all you have to do is recognize this ongoing, ever-present knowingness called I amness. 
and it existed now, five minutes ago, five years ago, five decades ago, five centuries ago, five millennia ago, and before the Big Bang. And fundamentally, I amness doesn't enter the stream of time and objects. That's why it's the unborn. And therefore, it never dies. Doesn't mean it goes on forever. It means it doesn't go on at all in the stream of time. It's just ever present, pure I amness. So we want to come back and anchor that because that's another very simple way that whenever you are concerned that I can't do the practice or I don't understand it, simply recognize who it is that says I don't understand it. That is I amness and that is infallible. So this is something that you can never ever get wrong. If you don't understand it, just Recognize who doesn't understand. I don't understand it. I am. So that's, that's a, a, a barometer that you can use to anchor that in addition to the work you do on big mind. So you can sort of use that maybe in, in, in the coming days uh, as a way that you can fundamentally always be sure of who and what you are. And it's absolutely infallible. And before, the universe was, I am. And that is the fundamental, absolute secret of the great traditions. It's a secret all calls to realize and then to manifest in an integral way. I am that I am. That's mm. good, right? That's the gist I, of everything, like all spirituality. I think once you can get that and grasp that, you're good. Pretty much. Um, and then you really know what the ingredients taste like in the kitchen and you can really start cooking. <laughs> exactly. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the meal of life and the, the supper of life. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and you have all these different modalities of ways to attain different states and activate certain, you know, aspects of like the body's stored trauma and you can do all the things energetically, but really until you come to understand that fundamental, like, beingness you know that i amness stripped away from everything until you really go in that journey and unfold the the who am i question then i would say the cooking life experience and only then can you really start to fully harness the the depth of the the healing in these different modalities and these different spiritual tools because then you you come to recognize oh like it's simple to let go there's nothing mm. to let go here. It's just the observer. It's just the witness. And you can really just kick back in the movie theater of the of the mind and just witness life and allow it to flow effortlessly. And this is where it's like the magic really starts to unfold. And we were talking about the green room, like life just starts getting cinematic, man. Like <laughs> magic <laughs> stuff starts to unfold. It's wild. Yeah, man. Life is a movie. <laughs> and once you can grasp the I amness, you can write the movie. Mm -hmm. you become the actor you become the movie the actor and the audience all at the same time yeah but i like what you said man first like first step before you do that before you manifest whatever you want before you get the secret is you have to find out that um that purusha that undying self the the self that is always the self and always was the self and from there it's almost like Ken Wilber said it's like another universe like it's not even involved in this timeline but from there <laughs> you can you can edit this timeline like there's energy there's creative yeah. energy involved in that just simple presence it's hard to explain hard to put into words if uh you don't know what i'm talking about right now but if you know <gasps> what i'm talking about then it's like oh yeah okay yeah well i guess even then like if we can strip it down to like an elementary level it's the i think even the i am statement can get a little conflated with how it gets tossed around nowadays where it's it's go beyond I, like the the very spiritual affiliated i am statement and just go with that one reference frame we always know me myself and i you know yeah. it's it's the sense of coming to recognize who you were before you were named you know that's why i, ch I chuckled uh because he's like before your parents you know were, were came here it's like yeah valid same thing like i love it because it brings back to that point where it's like you know your existence, your sense of self is always the only unchanging thing. What you identify with, what you externalize, what you attach with, that's always unchanging. But the one thing that's always present is you. You're the witness of the outside. You're the witness of the inside. Fundamentally, who is that? 
without any of the other adjectives. What's the noun? Mm-hmm. You know, like, and when we can look at it like that, then you start to come to recognize the, you know, coming back into the undying self and that real juiciness of this experience, that presence, that witness in which we are. And then it starts to get really, I would say, I like the word juicy. And it's been a hot word lately in my life because it's just like, then you start to know your role that oh, it's like what you said earlier. It's like, oh, you are the producer. You're the director. You're the actor. You're the audience. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, cool. And so is everyone else. Exactly. And so yeah. is everything else. And what's yeah. the underlying essence here in theme? Love. Okay, cool. So how can we work with this? Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. How do we create out of love? How do we write the script of the movie out of love? Right. There's no other way to write it. Once you can kind of grasp that truth that you just said, you have to write it out of love. If you don't, mm-hmm. then... It's a bad movie. <laughs> well, it's the only thing that's left, right? Yeah. When you really strip it away, all it is is love. Like, what is love? Openness. You know, it's mm-hmm. that pure presence to be. And that's like this womb of creation, this presence of experience, like this vortex of energy in which we can see we are. Mm-hmm. It's just openness. Mm. It's love, baby. It's love. Baby. <laughs> that's what it's all about. And it's the connection between that. It's the connection between your seemingly separate self and the unity that we all are. It's that energetic spirit of love that creates the binding of uh, the seemingly dual states of separate self and then Purusha. And then through that Holy Spirit, I guess you could say, is the blending, it's the, it's the triad between um, the three. And then Ooh. thus that's, uh, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to get at right here? Oh yeah. It's, um, that's the, and that's how you create, and that's how you create from god man um there's no other way yeah. to put it mm, i like that that holy spirit of love yeah just that glue i think love is the holy spirit like once we resonate on that and act out of love that is the spirit of a human being that's truly how we're supposed to act in the glue like mm. that. yeah the, it's the glue that binds us together man and it's so easy to find mm. it's also so easy to lose <laughs> <laughs> right well we lose it from from our desires i think it's literally our lower yeah. self mm-hmm. that brings it out of uh our consciousness like when you say i am hungry i am tired when you when you when you take the sentence i am and put something else after it you're already you're already lost and it doesn't so- mean like it doesn't mean disregard that it doesn't mean disregard because we all have desires we all have wants but it's simply work with that and that's not the end point it's like yeah you 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 still act in according to that but you act in according to that knowing that behind the scenes it's always the i am the i am came yeah. first and then after is the i am hungry i am <laughs> whatever it is yeah. yeah even sequentially in the sentence it's like literally i am is first oh yeah and then i am horny whatever it is exactly <laughs> it, it takes you out but uh yeah that's the game and Back that's and the forth. funny well it's the funny stuff here because even like when children develop language like it's always that recognition of like the i am first mm-hmm. like it's the it's the natural state of our recognition of where we're at in the play and then yeah. we get lost in that journey but it's like you know we can only it's like the yin yang symbol it's like we have to go into the darkness to find the light yeah you know and then it becomes this journey of bring the light back into the darkness you know and then and, and, a, and, <laughs> that's yeah. why it's like the yin yang is a dance it's not like a straight line it's a literal mm-hmm. just like it's a dance between like was it two fish is it supposed to be or whatever yeah. it is it's like uh it's a constant movement yeah i mean you can even see it as like the the toroidal field in which we are it's always feeding into itself yeah you know like that's it's like the crazy energy here that we have to look at is that life is always self-perpetuating for change and evolution through this inner looking. And I think that's one of the biggest aspects of the spiritual path or journey that gets super lost in the sauce is like, there's no end point, you know, mm-hmm. that recognition of the I am and the beingness, it just becomes more and more in depth. You just go deeper into it. You know, yeah, it's like exactly. once you, once your river returns to the ocean, now you're just exploring the ocean, yeah. you know, like, mm-hmm. and it's, it's remembering that fact when you're, when you're diving deep into some of the, the more chaotic themes or the more dark points of like the life's film that plays out before you, mm-hmm. it's coming to that position to really come back into love and appreciation for every moment. Yeah. Like, yeah, live love. Like I just celebrated my 32nd birthday 
And my, I have like little, thank you, brother. I have little goals for each year, like little mantras for my, you know, my, my rotation, we could call it. And it's that sense of last year was live love. Like what is really living love? Like fully, how can we live this truth that we know to the depths of our being? And, you know, my deduction was like, well, I have to get rid of all the things that I'm holding on to that keep me from that recognition of love Mm -hmm. and what is openness, you know, but openness. So what blocks that assumptions? You know, I, I, again, it's like, I question Buddha. I go even further. I'm like, okay, well, you're talking about attachments at the root of suffering. Well, what are your attachments attached to man? Like, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so it's some fundamental assumption that we have on life. And, you know, one thing that I think is important to clarify here is like assumptions, you know, everyone always carries some type of yearning or desire with life, but the assumption is that you're dropping the the reaction to life when it presents you something different. Yeah. You're dropping the assumption that life is always going to play you what you want. Mm -hmm. And then it turns into the lesson, you know, life becomes the living lesson. It becomes the classroom where it's just like, okay, everything's, I know everything's for me. I am life. So let's enjoy the show. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's just that indifference starts to become more compassionate and less like detached and Mm -hmm. it still becomes separate, but intimate. So Mm -hmm. this year is this really kind of taking it a step further. And it's just like, all right, well, when's life like the most radiant and abundant and the juiciest? And I'm like, obviously Thanksgiving and and gratitude, you know? Mm -hmm. So what is gratitude in action if I'm trying to apply it for a life? Well, that's praise. So this year is really all about living in reverence, living every slice of now in praise. Yeah. Like full appreciation for the moment, full love, truly full love for each moment. And who has life been like, have fun with that test. We're going to test you quick. See how oh, you yeah. feel about it. And it's Never just like, happens. it's, and it's, oh, always, always. It's just like, oh, checks out. <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's, a, uh, it's already been, I would say unfolding some of the most deepest recognitions of this grand matrix of love and light. Like, yeah. And it's, uh, it's just been that truth in action. So it's been it's been really juicy just to see and how everyone's tapping into it really. Like all of a sudden I feel like there's a mass awakening, oh, like yeah. more and more people are just like really sinking and digging deep into like this vein of, of consciousness. And it's like, Oh yeah. <laughs> it's happening right now, man. We're living through a renaissance. Yeah. It's 100%. a wonderful time to be alive. It's a trippy time to be alive for sure. But um, it's happening, man. We're all waking up to really what we are, our true identity, the infallible identity. That's what we're waking up to. And uh, mm. we're doing it by, like you said, you mentioned you're taking away things like you're, 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 you're realizing what doesn't serve you, right? That's what I see spirituality as putting it very simply. Yeah. Is it's not your you, you need to have this or I need to have this in order to get enlightened. It's like, no, what do what is keeping me from this enlightenment? What is keeping yeah. me from letting the light in? <laughs> that's spirituality it's taking away what doesn't serve you what doesn't make you happy um to getting rid of your conditionings uh the narratives in your head and really truly simplifying your life like monks do that's what monks yeah. do man they're the extreme example of it but what they do in order to reach <laughs> this nir- nibbana is they simplify their life to the most extreme yeah. Well, we not saying that everybody should become a monk, but look at what they do and learn their lessons. Their life is a lesson. And yes. They're trying to teach us that if you keep it simple, man, you'll negate your suffering. That's, that's what it's all about. And Ooh. I truly believe that as I've been on this path for a few years now, I've noticed that I'm not adding really anything to my life. I mean, I do, but it's it's like mostly... I'm taking away things in terms of the media that I used to consume, the music that I listen to, my diet. It's becoming a lot more simple. Um, oh, yeah. The people that I hang out with, I don't hang out with as much people as I used to. I keep my circle small now. Um, oh, yeah. What else is there, man? Uh, it's just all facets of my life have become a lot less uh, just multifaceted and becoming just very simplified. Just be very like straight and narrow wise. You know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. From that, I've noticed I'm becoming just less, um, what's the, like less scatterbrained, less 
things that I think I'm I'm not, and just getting uh get staying on the straight and narrow of me uh on my true identity of who I am, which is thus leads to less suffering, you know, staying yeah. being able to not get distracted out of that I amness that Ken Wilber talked about, staying <laughs> in that mindset. Working with love, acting out of love, and that all comes from simplicity. I think being able to not get distracted, and um, I think that's where a lot of people are going to realize their life um, mm. is going to the their they're going to realize that their life is a lot easier to bear if you just simplify it. I think a lot of people are waking up right. You get the you get the message first, like whoa, yeah. You, you figure out what you are or you figure out what you're not and you figure out like you have all these epiphanies and psychedelic experiences. And from that, really, the only thing that we can do is simplify our life so we can have, we can stay on that wavelength of the epiphanies and psychedelic experiences that we had and what they showed us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you want to yeah, stay yeah. in that Purusha mindset, you have to be able to figure out what is not, what what do I not need? And honestly, man, yeah. we don't really need much as a human <laughs> being. It's pretty it's pretty simple to survive. Like, what do we yeah. really need? I need food and water. Yeah, wouldn't it very simply on the material level? I don't need anything. Anything else yeah. after food and water and sleep? Maybe you know a bed. Oh yeah, sleep. Yeah. Some people Some say you don't of... even need sleep. Some people say you don't even need food or water. Some people I mean... live off of light. There, I mean, that's where we start getting into the the more interesting <laughs> and tangible realms. But I think yeah. the the question to really to really ask for for those really looking into this path and journey of like really refining their life, because like all this really is like spirituality is just refinement. Yeah. You know, it's always just like peeling that. back a layer. And Good same way. thing with our life. So like when we look at really like the simplicity of it, I come at it from a little bit of a different angle, and it's almost like a little bit uh pushy against like. And it's not saying a knock against like the monastery monk life, because I, I think it does show like what you said, the extreme example of like what one can do when it comes to extreme discipline and simplicity. Mm -hmm. But to me, I think that we're in the age and era where it's much like I've talked with a few of my colleagues where it's like, we're here to rebrand shamanism. We're here to mm -hmm. really bring back the inner sovereignty within each being to create a culture of namaste, like that it really yeah. is each, each person is divine light. And it's coming to that recognition where it's, you are your own monastery. Your body is your temple. You know, yep. it's like living out your life in, a, in the simplicity ways, in the simplistic ways, I would say, in terms of efficiency by refining it with like, what do you love? Like, what do you really love? Because when you find that when you really love something, it really does clear out all the other distractions that you spend all the other time and energy investing in other yep. things. And you funnel that into your different loves, your different likes, your different tools of efficiency, your different things that you really use all the time. Like, and I guess that's the the real aspect of it where it's like, if you look at it from the sense of discipline, it tends to come from some type of um, some type of lacking or like forced nature to it, where it's just like you're 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 perceiving the whole change negatively versus like if you see it as the loving action, where it's just like I'm trying to clear out the distraction so I can love myself more in this moment, then it turns into like this abundance energy and mm -hmm. this radiating light. And yeah. that's where I feel like we're all really tapping into when we're saying we're both su getting super busy, like life's just been wild. It's that we're here to create the new culture. And I feel like since like the contraction that was the Rona, there's been this mass relaxation expansion and, you know, yeah. there has, it's now everyone's time to start bridging and networking. So in this journey of simplicity, I feel like my life has definitely been more refined lately in that same light of like, what is it really that I've loved the most? Mm -hmm. And if anyone's going through this journey now, I really just recommend is just like really start refining and looking at your life through a lens of love. Like what yeah. really, what really makes your heart smile? Like what causes you to radiate and follow that? Cause like, that's your greatest compass. Like what is it? The heart has more neurons and like synapses and things in, in its own beingness than the brain. It's yeah. like arguably one of the, like, the greatest, if not the greatest perceiver organ that we have, like, let that guide you. It's, it's the fundamental throne of the soul. Like if we look at the heart chakra, like this is where we have to really look at our center point mm -hmm. and come back to that. I guess you would say living the, living the light that is the, I am in which we started off with. 
you know, it's like that because that beingness can be categorized as love. And it's a love that we can't express fully in our simple terms because it's so dynamic, but like, we know what it feels like yeah when it smiles we can't fully express that love but i think it's something that we embody it's something yeah. that we act out of it's not something that we i mean we're talking about it right now so it's kind of a little bit of hypocrisy but but it's something that <laughs> we you just become and you literally almost mm. like it's an energy like it's an energy wavelength that you you resonate at you know, it's a, it's a way of being. And there's some people that you meet that you can just tell they're on that wavelength. They're just resonating that. And the, when you resonate yeah. at that energy, it's like you give it out too. It's this contagious radio frequency of light that is just, uh, it's like a virus, but it's a good virus. It's not a bad one. And it just spreads to people. But it's through literally your vibration. It's through yeah. like your, what is your, like your, what frequency is your body at right now and love is um love is the highest one man i don't i don't (laughs) higher than love and you can feel it man you you know you can we can talk about love all we want i can say i love you or someone says they love you and it's whatever that's cool but you can literally feel when somebody loves you yeah you know and when you when i I notice too when i whenever i say in my head i love this person I think like the conversation changes. Like whenever I try to like be yeah. with a person and I love them and I, I try to like say, I, I appreciate everything that they are. I know that they can feel it. And it's this like back and forth thing. And I'm not doing it like out of the ego. Like I want to see if this person can feel my love. It's not like that. It's like, <laughs> it's like it, when I can That's genuinely great. approach somebody yeah. with love and have them f- like try to like just love them for who they are. Don't have that internal voice that is like, that is a, uh, you know, has those intrusive thoughts about a person if they look a certain way or their hair is not right or they say something weird. Just getting rid of that and just simply being with a person, just simply being there for a person in in an instance, you can feel that, man. And then Mm. you can feel that off of them because you're genuinely at that wavelength. And you can feel it's this back and forth thing, like I said before. It's It's very powerful. It's the dance. It's the dance of love, man. It's very yeah. powerful. So what I'm trying to say is like, just it's something that we just literally are. We we, yeah. we always are that, but it's almost like we're we have a distortion through that. Like we're always love, but there's there's like blinders on sometimes on when we forget that we're love, you know, yeah. through fear, through our separation. But when you truly resonate at our true identity, it almost changes up. Like it puts you in like another realm, like another dimension. Like you realize, like the, oh, this is what it means to be a human being. It's yeah. not like any of that other noise that I, yeah. I you know, I, I wanted to get rid of. Mm-hmm. It's not any of the other narratives that were told to me. It's like, oh no, it's just, it's so simple, man. It's, it's love, and that's, uh, mm. yeah, that's where we're going, man. We're all, I think, we're going to a world, and it's gonna look different. It's gonna feel different. I might not even be alive for it. Who knows? I'm I would maybe in another body, but this this world that we're moving toward is literally going mm. to be a world of love. Yeah. And it's going to be like a different state. It's we it's, might see were you, were you gonna say something? I was like, it's already here. That's true. It's already here, but not everybody's embodying it. It's definitely no, already here. You know not what yet. I mean? But there's a lot of distortions. Hundred percent. But, but once we get there and we live in that heaven-like state it's going to be like a different realm like we'll almost switch timelines like you know we've heard that the new age talk of switching timelines yeah you know going into 5d reality i don't think it's like we literally physically go into a different reality i think it's just that the entire collective of billions of people maybe not even billions it's, you know i don't know maybe just starts off with like a fraction of human beings that mm. start off on that other resonance and it does suck us into this this wormhole it sucks yeah. us into this like <laughs> toroidal wormhole like you said when there's no there's no way there's no way back i think we're there yeah. but it's that slow process it's like a slow snowball right now it's just it's just kind of mm. it's kind of building that. up it's building up but then eventually it's going to reach a breaking point where we're going to reach this whole new realm it's going to appear yeah. as a whole this new max realm. max capacity well yeah. the look the way i look at it now is that you know 
the peaks and examples that I've gotten to witness and the aspects of culture in which I'm seeking to create out here in Seattle. I think that's one of the biggest fundamental shifts. You know, I got a chance, shout out to Jared and Nat. I got a chance to go to this, uh, my first festival, which was more of a restival because it's like a, it's encouraging, like just microdosing and so, like sobriety and then microdosing if you're going to choose to consume anything. I like that. Um, so it was uh, Samadhi Summers, the festival, and it was really just like in terms of transformation, the way I could express it is that, you know, when you have so many people on that frequency of that authentic love, that, yeah. that really just pure being this light, your joy isn't contained. And when you have that, uh, when you have that opportunity to experience such liberation, it truly is like everyone's hearts expanded, like everyone would be on Molly or some one of these types of uh, medicines that can really just give you that full oneness, interconnectedness, knowing it strips away all that, all the lesser. So to be able to know and experience that, that, oh, welcome home, folks, you know, because I'm living in that life, like as the beingness, but to see people that are firsthand and for myself to have so many collected in a space, it was, you know, it was truly inspiring. And it, it was, it brings one to tears to think about the potential here, because mm -hmm. what I witnessed personally was a thinning of all the veils in terms of our resistance to recognitions. So it was just like everyone essentially went through this massive leveling up in just a few day period, just through genuine conversation and experience through breath works and the different workshops that were going on. And the unlocking that happened here was really almost just like a pilgrimage shot out because everyone just went and explored and was just doing all their own stuff. And I know for myself personally, it was like, hosting pop-up festivals, like day festivals in the park for people to witness, um, ecstatic dances, just different gatherings with the men's meditation circle that I lead, like, and just different, you know, gatherings of getting different curators and people together and musicians and creatives. Like I'm starting to see that that snowball is a lot bigger than we may have thought. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. there's a yearning for it right now more than ever to show people what it means to play and be loving again. Mm. And I think that's been the really inspiring thing throughout this summer. And as we're entering into fall in this transition, it's like the connections and keeping that momentum going are just continuing to reveal that the people who are about this life right now are like the elders in training where it's mm -hmm. like everything we're yeah. going through has just been like this wild experience of just like the trial by fire is just to learn the lessons we need to, to make sure that we build whatever we're building right now with integrity. Yeah. So it's been really beautiful just to see how it's been unfolding in that sense, because the way I look at it now is just like, oh my gosh, like it can accelerate even faster because that's just how love works. You know, the more that we do and the more that we gather and the more that we really dance our dance and show people how to be, it's like that leadership through action. It's that knowing of like, oh, they're doing it. I want to know what that's going on. Yeah, and through, I yeah, feel like we're saying. entering, I feel like we're entering that time now too, where it's just like, there's so much mass tension in the collective that, mm -hmm. you know, all of those who are in alignment are becoming more of a channel or a vortex for these mass energies to come through. So like your the the need and necessity for these different pockets of, you know, creation of culture of love and light to spread this message, to spread this like mode of being is getting more of an urgency to like do. Cuz mm -hmm. it's again it's that it's that release for everyone. It's that healing modality for everyone to experience that type of community and connection. Mm -hmm. So it's like the call to action has been now everyone's just like, we're all really pushing it. Like I just seeing a really cool, like birthing of this type of community, connecting all the different ones throughout the state in Washington. So like, yeah, I, I feel like that's kind of been a, a big push because I feel like we're creating a net for the collective pretty here soon. Mm. And it's like, a net, yeah, a net of just like, well, because people are going to be lost in the sauce pretty soon. And, you know, like we're like the spiritual SWAT team clearing house, like, <laughs> you know, like none of this, yeah. like clear, get rid of this, like crappy, like, no, we're not worshiping anyone. We're not doing none of this. Like, yeah. you're the divine. You're, the, mm -hmm. we're all the divine. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it, it's trying to rebuild this stuff with that real authentic message so we don't get lost, man. Cause I feel like yeah. that's what happened ultimately. Like, I love ceremony. 
I love different ritual, pra- like ritualistic practices from all the different cultures. I love being able to integrate that into my own spiritual practice because I feel like it resonates on a different soul level. Like what I'm like, ooh, I really like mm, that caused like a, a real palpable shift within me. Like, I like mm-hmm. that. I'm going to start incorporating that into my routine. I'm going to start incorporating this into my practice. And it's giving people the empowerment to create their own spiritual path so we don't lose this information again. Cause I feel like that's what, that's what the real ancient ways lost the, the path on is that they made everything super essentially like authoritative. Yeah. Like you had one or two people that knew all the information and it was just very like, and I understand because there's power in the knowledge, but like, this is the importance of understanding where we're entering into as a theme of like consciousness is the love vibration is this co-creation wave. It's like, no, we really are becoming brothers and sisters in that knowing of the heart. Now we all need knowledge we're all worthy of knowledge and we all have always been worthy of knowledge, but then, you know, karmic things happen throughout the world and you have to relearn what's really important. So you don't lose it again. And I think that's where we're at as like a generation is the people who are really in this life and in this light and shining that light and abundance is because it's like, Oh yeah, we're the, we're the, the soul reminders is like, Hey, we can't forget this stuff again, guys. Like (laughs) we're all, we're all it. No yeah. more, like, no more, like, putting people on a pedestal or yeah. creating no idols. Dogma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you are all worthy. We are all worthy. This is the kingdom of heaven. Like, we are all the light within. We are all the Christ within. You know, like, really pushing that recognition that it's like, hey, it's all Christ consciousness. Like, come back yeah. home to the ground of your being. We're all standing on it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and really be about it. Really be about it. Mm-hmm. It's a remembrance, man. I like what you Ooh. said, man. It's lost knowledge. It's a lot. It's um lost knowledge of our unconscious psyche, mm-hmm. and I think the difference now is, um, we have the internet. So <laughs> this knowledge Facts. is it's available for everybody, unless you're in North Korea or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but even then. The, yeah, even then, maybe you can get. You can, There's a search. Maybe we got some North Koreans tuning in now. Shout out North Korea. Let, let us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah man it's uh it's a time of remembering our true being getting back to it it's a time of really embodying what we're supposed to be and there is a lot of tension right now like you yeah. said um but that's just our collective ego dying that's that, that yeah. veil it's getting pierced mm-hmm. Whatever that is, I don't know where it came from the reptilians, the illuminati, the cabal yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever dimensions. Yeah, some kind of dark forces have put a plague upon our mind. And right now, mm. Babylon is crumbling. It's happening mm. right now. Because, I mean, it may seem, it may seem Bad. like it's not, yeah, it may seem like it's not if you turn on CNN or Fox News, like you, it, the world may seem so bleak. But there is this underground of uh, mm. spiritual SWAT teams, like you said, that are, <laughs> congregating right now and that's our job is to like find the others is to be about right. it really be about it and then find yeah. others that are really about it and then there's power mm-hmm. in numbers and then that's the revolution that's the true revolution the revolution won't be televised the revolution is within and the revolution starts with you, you yourself like you gotta revolutionize yeah. how you live and how you how you see yourself and then from there find the others because there are plenty of others out there and that's why i'm glad i started this podcast man like it 100%. exposed me to so many people that are also on this wavelength because before i was like dude am i going crazy all the people in my life aren't about it like i try to talk to people about this stuff at least try to like i'm not preaching anything but just at least try to and people just like nope nothing just like there's nothing there there goes gary again about that spiritual stuff and i'm just like (laughs) man like there's got to be others out there and i luckily through youtube and reading actually old text I found out that, oh, people have done this before. Oh, people are yeah. doing this right now. Oh, okay, I'm not crazy. And then once we provide that, like me and you and anybody listening, once we provide that path for other people being the pathfinders, it's easier for the others to come along. And then they do it for other people in their life and they do it for other people in their life. And it's this like it's this tree of knowledge of life that just grows and grows. And it doesn't oh, yeah. stop. And from there, man, that's how we create heaven. It's this slow growth process, the slow growth, the slow spreading of the of the of the word, the good word, 
And then from there, um, we we change, man. It might take generations. It might take mm. generations to to truly embody heaven. I think it will, especially like people like us becoming parents. Um, that's yeah. really where the where it gets uh, where it gets juicy is when you raise <laughs> your kids to be on that hundred percent, where they don't have to go through the shit that we went through. They yeah. don't have to go through the struggle. Like literally, you allow them to. I don't know how. I'm not a parent. I'm not going to speak for like how how to raise conscious children but i know when and if i have kids someday i'm going to try to allow them to follow that path that i had to go through all the trials and tribulations they won't have to go through it hopefully like they'll they'll have a good um foundation a good you know basis of how to approach that and if they have questions i'll answer it and don't let them watch the news and stuff like that (laughs) just provide a good framework for how how you become a human being because that's another thing too man is we we weren't told how to go about this at all from no. our from birth we were thrown in these pretty much prison camps for children aka school where they just feed yeah. us information that the indoctrination doesn't center yeah it's just indoctrination centers it really are, they really are man i mean there's some good things like they taught us language and basic mathematics but on yeah. the other side of that most of the information they tell us there are is very um, unuseful to us finding out who we really are. Oh, so, 100%. I mean, well, and they get rid of all the modalities that really help you express and find that through the simple practice of creation. That's a living meditation. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. dance, the arts, yeah. all those different creative mediums, theater, like music, like, mm-hmm. it's, it really is. I actually think we can do it a little bit faster than like a few generations. Honestly, I think like two ours and yeah. whatever the next like are this and this in the next era. Cause I feel like lifespan's yeah. gonna lifespan's gonna really impact stuff too. Timothy Leary like, actually has a saying that that's how people change. It takes two generations. So it's interesting that you say that. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know where he came up with that, but it does make sense. Two generations. Like yeah, our children lay the foundation, be good, be good parents. And then they're already good. And then they raise their kids just to be the, yeah, like better than us, better than they are. Yeah, well, it's sense. interesting when you say like we're all gathering, like this different SWAT teams are kind of collecting <laughs> throughout the globe, but because yeah. it's like it's this sense of we're each, I feel, creating different systems, and I feel like that's what's really going to be important in the future. We're seeing all a mm-hmm. lot of this emergence with cryptos, and it's like this this uh, technological level up of yeah. our interconnectedness is coming together more. So it's creating business models that are more integral to people's livelihoods and beingnesses and really things that companies that serve people, not just, you know, the board and your investors. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing where I'm looking at it now is like the, the internet, what we mentioned earlier is like that, that first technological bridge of interconnecting people, how much things have accelerated how much things are continuing to accelerate as technology grows in terms of like our immersion and what we can be exposed to. Like, I feel that as long as we create the systems that are really based in that theme of love, everything else becomes obsolete because they're just going to be so efficient. It's like Buckminster Fuller just becomes so efficient. The old models become obsolete. Mm -hmm. And I really do see that's why we're all tasked with the lives that we've had to all gain the different pieces of the puzzle to help really shine light into a certain problem of like the human experience to bring humanity back to how we create systems to bring compassion to like how we actually create like connections and communities so it's been really like it's been really wild just to see the the unfoldment and it's it's getting really i don't know i was inspiring is the only word i can really use because it's like the limit is really our imagination because it's we can have gatherings in our communities all the time but it's like, what are we really going to do to create different models? So like, for me, I mm-hmm. see it as the grand scheme is people like us, like in this light, at one point, we're all going to end up probably getting into politics. Like <laughs> whether, whether it be like that's local, whether it be local, I mean, obviously local is the most important, but like, I feel like that's kind of one of the natural progressions of a lot of the people that are in these spiritual SWAT teams. Is that like, not everybody, but like a one or few that like the ones that know that they're, they would be good at it, but don't want to do it. Mm. I fall, I I fall myself into that category. I like, I really don't want to do it, but I know my life was like literally training me to do it. 
through like my parents being in politics, my late father, who was a judge and went Harvard law. Like I heard that I heard I've been to Harvard law so many times. I never wanted to go to Harvard or like an Ivy league school because like, Oh my God, like that's terrifying. Like <laughs> what, what ego, but like, and don't talk to people, but y'all say it a lot, but, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, I've seen that, like, that's just kind of the next step for what we're all doing. Cause like building for myself personally, building companies, building communities, building culture, like building healing modalities and centers. These types of things are kind of giving everyone the, I would say like the experience to start to recognize and see where a lot of the realer life problems are. Like, again, like mm. we've, I've talked about it in past shows and things of that nature, like been to jail. I've gone through the judicial system. The legal system's broken. I've, like, I've been, you know, a statistic. I've been all on this different level. I've been in the colleg the collegiate corruption and the academic corruption. Like I've seen so many different aspects to it where it's like, oh yeah, I've worked in big pharma. Like, you know, I've seen every head of the big beasts that are out there and I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I know that life is kind of gently pushing myself and a few others towards politics one day, because that's how we really change things. Make this stuff law to show that like, you can't go back on this. Like yeah. these are like the fact that like, we're, we're still getting spam calls and robo calls. Cause we have no right to privacy on the internet. Like, come on, like, where's the amendments? Like these people need to be working for the people again. Mm -hmm. And we need to show that like that through example, again, of like how to be like, okay, we can create systems. We can create culture. Let's create a better like map for how we can really build our society, make certain things illegal that make these companies just monsters. Like, get rid of a lot of, I mean, there's so many things in this new age wave of like the legal issues of this whole country, but like, there's a lot of things we could do to make this world a better place. And it could really be just like that. Yeah. One, one voting cycle, bro. Like, mm -hmm. like that's like eight months from like getting someone into a first vote for something. Yeah. Like not even a year. Yeah, man. Weed hey. legal everywhere. Boom. Yeah. Psychedelics legal. Boom. Like decriminalize all that shit. Get rid of the drug, the war on drugs and the money laundering and all that shit. Just in one fell swoop. They got to hurry up with that one. Cause that's ruining a lot of people's lives for psychedelics and weed not being legal. Oh, and it just made car just made cartels super strong and the money yeah. laundering for in the war and the wars that we created just to get certain fields of things. Like I'm not, there's so much corruption out there, but like if, when the warriors of light truly awaken, I feel like that's a role we're all going to be called to do because it's going to be another, um, really every, the, uh, every person who I see as someone who's again, part of like a spiritual spot team, we're a warrior of light. That's why we're mm -hmm. here. You know, we're the, it's, we came here because we've likely been the souls that have always been involved in all these different revolutions and pivots. And I feel like this is our time to really get it right. You know, I feel like the bot, I feel like the jar has been jostled enough for us to really be like, yeah break free you know yeah man oh yeah <laughs> well, i would vote for you if you ran for president i would vote for you bro like hey, you let's get the light workers committee like we'll we'll be our own party one party yeah. for everybody hey let's do that man let's let's make the light worker party and i'll be i'll be your vice president okay so you run <laughs> okay, i'll be the vice and let's make this happen okay i don't think either of us are old enough yet but once once we get old enough was it 36 yeah 30, once we get 36, let's run for president. <laughs> let's we'll, we'll take the house. We'll change the game. That's if, you know, hey, even, if we even have a president by then, who knows like know, how right, the systems man? can change. Yeah, I mean, I see eventually us not having one person be called a president. I think if we want to go on the subject of um, decentralization, like kind of what you touched upon, that's where we're going. It's a decentralization 100%. of these groups, of these SWAT teams, which I like, I like that word, man, I, the SWAT teams that we have. And it's a decentralization of that power, you know, which maybe that's going to lead to a dissolving of the United States of America. Who knows? We'll hmm. see. We already have that with the 50 states. It's literally like decentralization of power, but maybe even more so in the future. We'll be in these like smaller communities that somehow... I don't know how it's going to work, man. I'm not a politician. I'm not into that stuff too much. But like, I think the way of humanity is decentralization of power. Like we used to have one king, one one royal family. Right. Just back in the day, they ran everything. You couldn't go against them. Now, fast forward a few hundred years later, we have a checks and balances companies. system. We have companies. Yeah, there's like there's power. There's definitely centralized power for sure. But it's like multiple entities of centralized power. So now it's like... In essence, we're regaining that power and we, we're 
decentralizing that whole system just us by us uh gaining our own self empowerment yeah. um yeah man so what, what we, how do we start at this off uh decentralization yeah running for of- president <laughs> warriors of light yeah. well it's that sense of us coming back into the the, the connections that will really change this place and oh, how yeah. fast we can do it we can do it in two generations oh, but yeah. even with even with the decentralized aspect yo like i feel like that is we're getting kind of like a preview of what things could be in the dystopian version mm-hmm. and i feel like it's up to us to show people like what they could be in the utopian and I feel like even like, and I know that word is super, like it's a triggering word for so many people. Cause like utopia, there's never going to be perfection, quote unquote, you know, there's always going to be some type of issue, but we can really mitigate who gets lost through the cracks. And we can live in a world one day where we truly live in abundance, like where our cup does overflow it. Like that's that radiance of love and light that we feel from another when you're on that wavelength. It's like, oh, their cup overflows. Cool. Your cup's overflowing. Like when we can create a society like that, I feel like the natural progression is going to be something like, not like the gross new world order of a few companies that own everything and own people, but like to have like a global conglomeration where it's like everyone almost has like a bill of rights where it's just like, Hey, everyone's a free sovereign being on this planet. We're all earthlings. We're all siblings. Like we all have different cultures and creeds, no more bullshit. You know, like we live in abundance. Like there's so much, I guess the real big thing here is like, a lot of this stuff can't get created until a lot of the truth starts getting revealed in terms of like what has been hidden about who we are and what we yeah, are, exactly. you know, this, this, and I feel like this is almost like the grassroots underground train of like, again, like the spiritual SWAT team, just like ready to just to like, we're all setting up just to kind of be like one big gotcha, one big breach. <laughs> yeah, it's going right. to be a big breach the for breach. society. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just like clear, you know, it's and we must- the door to love. It, yes. Yes. And then, uh, <laughs> And really that's going to be the next like push. But I feel like right now is again, like the connection phase where we're building like this great mycelium network, yeah, like of just like interconnected roots. And it's people like us where we're connected with, where it's like, oh, someone's that's connected to you. Oh, here's Gary Haskins. He's already pre-vetted by Peter. This is someone in the spiritual community. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. so I feel like that time is coming where it's just like the, the time to build and the time to breach is like, we're, we're yeah. getting there. It's a teetering point, I feel. Mm-hmm. I think in order for us to be able to be at that point of true decentralization of power, having that bill of rights, almost like a rewritten bill of human rights, yeah, um, we have to get rid of corruption in humanity's hearts. So the people, and usually the people that are in power now, I don't think they're on that wavelength at all. Man. Oh, yeah, never. So Very rarely. I always wondered this as like, do, maybe it's not in humanity's best interest to have other humans lead them to have somebody as a leader because i at the end of the day like we you know they can wear a nice suit have a nice haircut and they speak nice but in actuality they're a human being just like me and you like they all they have folly just like me and you they have you know a a shadow self just like you and i so what right do they have not even just politicians like people with immense amount of um influence in terms of money you know, in yeah. terms of resources, what right do they have to hold so much power yet be literally the same exact thing as you and I, you know, delusion, yeah. <laughs> whatever they want to attach it to. Like, I guess the thing with that question would be, you know, to create a world that truly everyone can live in abundance and have that type of sovereign life. How do we get people to truly be selfless? You know, how do we how do we get people to fall back into selflessness? Because charity work, giving that money away, philanthropy, like creating different models to heal people like yeah. that don't that aren't going to be based in profit like that requires like a heart shift. And I feel like it's going to take us to really put our foot down and vote with our dollar and for people to really come back to their power with everything they do you know yeah. really take their power in every monetary thing that they do yeah to really be conscious in every purchase and to know that like hey it's going to be a little bit more expensive probably to buy some of this produce but it's going to last a little bit longer when you cook it right and you store mm-hmm. it right and when you look at the products and look at what it's eating it's like if you look at that product and you remember you're going to eat that yeah that's going to get that's going to send you to the hospital like 20 years earlier you know, like it's yeah. so it's a, it's an education thing. And I guess that's always the hard part because it's like people have to want to learn. 
Yeah. But for those that don't, it's about creating the systems and models where the where the the choices that they make aren't going to be like detrimental to their health. Mm-hmm. And you know, because when we look at it before, like pre McGovern report in the seventies, you look at pictures of America and people all over. Obesity wasn't a thing. You know, then you start getting like corn syrup and sugars and mass productions of things. And you just start to see that push. You know, we go off the gold standard. You see America become this like global police, like for petrodollars, for oil. And it's all these different wars that get started. It's like it really isn't most of society that's fucking up. You know, it's a few people that are just creating bad pathways for people to to get sucked into. And like when they're not there, that shit doesn't exist. Mm hmm. That's true. Yeah. So we have to use our power of boycotting companies that we don't necessarily like, boycotting products that aren't good for the environment or for ourselves. Right. Or, yeah. And really get the truth out there of what some of these companies do, like the yeah. the Blue River that does jeans in China. Yeah, that like everything's, that. you know, the the all the different plants in, you know, like the South near all these different communities of color who they're like, they're mass farms, like those factory farms. And it's just like the rivers are bloody and just filled with just disgusting bodily waste yeah. from the animals. Like that, that's just mm. going to people's drinking water. Like mm. people don't even have drinking water. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. we have, we have real simple ways to cut the heads off these beasts, but we have to have people step into positions of leadership and really get the job done to, to educate people enough to, to realize that, Hey, in mass numbers, they can't cheat. Like, mm-hmm. regardless, like, yeah. you know, like if we really made a, like the, I remember when, like in Washington, when the GMO, like no GMO bill was going down, like all these food companies pumped, like, I think it broke records for like 8 billion or something like that, where it was like the most funds pushed into like a political campaign. And it was because it was going to, it was going to say that like all foods had to say if they were GMO or non-GMO, yeah. that's it. Mm-hmm. And it, it, everyone voted no because they're like a bunch of like lie campaigns of being like, well, it's going to cause your packaging charges to go up and all this other ridiculous things. Yeah. And people are just gullible, you know, but if you yeah. really created a, like an impactful campaign to show people like who really all the baddies were in this world, mm. I think it would be a, like a hard pivot because imagine it's like cigarettes. Honestly. It really now. is. It really is. We look at cigarettes, how impactful just putting some of that stuff up in boxes was for people. There are a lot yeah. of people that still do it, but like 70% of people stop because yeah. they're like, ugh, like, you know, like imagine if people were like, hey, you know, your bag of your bag of juicy fruit, like, yeah, high you know, your corn syrup, like just that's as bad as cigarettes. Yeah. Make, make it look just as bad as cigarettes. Like if there were smear campaigns on high fructose corn syrup and, you know, artificial sweeteners like that and also, uh, artificial colorants, uh, you know, this things that you can't pronounce on the back of the ingredients list. <laughs> <laughs> if there was, a, if we actually knew like what these things are doing to our body, then yeah, I th- and actually like put it out to, cause a lot of people just don't know. I think it just comes Acts. down to like, it's not that one, well, one, people don't have enough money to actually buy organic stuff, which that's, a, that's another problem in itself. And two, 100%. they just don't know. It's just like ignorance. The people don't know how bad the majority of the food is and not even just food, like other products that we get are for our body. Um, because we're just like, if you don't have that consciousness, you're not going to seek out better products. You're just going to take whatever you see on CVS or NPC, yeah. whatever's advertised to you and, and take it. And uh, that's kind yeah. of the situation that we're in right now. Hey, man, I apologize, but I got to use the bathroom really quick. Yeah, yeah so do you. take a quick intermission. Uh, I've been trying yeah, to hold pause. it, but it's getting a little. <laughs> do you? A few moments later. All right. Good to go. Sorry about that, man. I usually try to hydrate a lot before these things because talking actually is very dehydrating, but uh, oh, yeah. I think I did a little too much today. <laughs> oh, bro. No, when you had to go, go. You, you had to go, bro. You had to go. Yeah, I couldn't uh, really think. <laughs> it was just like, ah. <laughs> but, but it's, uh, I guess the one thing that's really bringing it back to it, you know, you said something that really evoked the whole aspect of why people are brought into these destructive pathways, right? And it's mm-hmm. when we're disconnected from source knowing and we're caught up in the primal, scarcity mindset becomes such a real thing, you know, when people are just f- trying to focus on survival, you know, and keeping yeah. people in that lower state of just cognitive function. It's just like they're not making safe choices, they're not making c- conscious choices. So, 
everything that I see now is like we're creating a world where we're putting people in a position to to really have a little bit of comfort, have a little bit of like abundance so then they can start to explore these things. Because only then once everyone feels like their needs are really checked off, will the world that we're really talking about ever be able to come to fruition. That's true. Because people have to, you know, and again, like there's going to be the the simple problems that we always have in just existence. But I feel like, you know, some say first world problems, stuff like that. But it's coming back to the world where we can create something where it's not going to be like a life or death, where yeah. it's it's problems through a different means. Like everything as we evolve, it's refinement. We bring it back to that. Every time we level up, something drops away. It's natural. That's like this path of ascension, right? The, mm-hmm. the greater we raise our vibration and frequency, the more the lesser stuff holding us down and holding back that frequency will drop. And the problems we will experience are different. There's still going to be problems. Yeah. You know, like yeah. there's going to be problems where you have a world of abundance where it's just like, all right, well, you know, we have a, this is where it's, you look at certain areas where it's like, okay, we're going to have to start killing some of these animals, like, cause they're invasive. They're, you know, they're, they're becoming a danger because things aren't in check. So it's like, we're going to have to really like redefine, like how we become shepherds of this planet. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be a trippy thing, but yeah, yeah I'm excited. Cool. I'm excited. And I got to say, dude, congratulations. Like, <laughs> <laughs> thank you man you know it's made possible by people like you so uh yeah keep on going it's just the beginning well this is creating a huge culture shift and you know i think that's the stuff where the work that you're doing just by bringing so many different minds that are tapping into the ocean of love yeah. mm-hmm. that's so important because there's infinite amount of paths back to home yep. you know and, and there needs to be a place where people can find those that resonate with their heart and not yeah. everyone resonates with someone's heart. Mm, that's true. Like it's super important work because it's creating the culture change where it's just like it's becoming this is what's entertaining to people now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Live and like would love that as a younger as a younger teen, you know, as a younger, younger adult man, just to be yeah. like, wait, y'all really like fuck with consciousness heavy. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um. I just do it because I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy having these conversations with people like you and spreading the good word because it's the least that I can do, man. Like I'm really, I mean, it's not much, it's not much at work. I guess it is. I mean, it's a decent amount of work, but like to me, like it's nothing, like it's just something I truly enjoy. Um, So I think that's what we all need to find is something that we all truly enjoy and truly um, just get lost in the process of creating because that's, what I do mm. it for. I don't do it for clout. I don't do it to like, <laughs> say I have a YouTube channel or anything. I do it because literally in this moment right now that I'm speaking, we're on camera. This is heaven for me. This is what I like to do. I literally mm. just like to dive into stuff like this. So if we can all find that, whether it be, you know, you're cooking, painting pictures, building houses, whatever it is, man, we're all good at our own things. We're all do, we all like to do certain things. We all have a knack within our soul. Even if you don't know what it is, you don't know that you do, we all do because we're all human mm-hmm. beings and we're all we're all part of that creator aspect, that creator energy. So mm. go within and find that and then nothing can hurt you, nothing can harm you. And that's how we build that's how we build the kingdom here, man. Is we all follow our dharma here. We all yeah. follow like what we're supposed to do here. We're all follow what truly you said this earlier, what you love. What do you really want here? Because we all yearn for something. We ultimately yeah. yearn for our connection back to that, that <laughs> I amness, like yeah. that connection back to God. But then once you get that, how do you resonate as God? How do you resonate? How do you create? Because God created us to create. So how do you create for God? Not for yourself, not for your ego. How do you create yeah. for everybody else here? And then yeah. from there, life becomes a flow. It becomes cinematic, mm. like how you said in the beginning. Mm. And it becomes this um, this journey. And with that, what else do you want? You know, what else do you want <laughs> in life? So true. A sense of purpose, like a sense of like knowing that being human is um, how do I put this? Being human is not just an accident. You are part of this divine plan. Mm. And from in this plan, 
is how you create the like you're part of the plan and your actions are also part of the plan so go within find that we all have that i really do believe man i do every, every single human being has the ability to find out what we're here for yeah. maybe it's not even creating any kind of like physical means just creating love it could just be like yeah. being a good husband yeah. you know it could just be creating children or creating i don't know man it's it's a day-to-day thing it's a moment to moment thing you create love wherever we go it's not necessarily like any kind of physical medium that we have to create, but we are all creating yeah, love. It, we're creating this energy. We're not even actually creating this energy. We're, we're like the mm-hmm. radio transmitters. We're getting the transmission yeah. of love. I'm yeah. not going to be so high and mighty to say I'm creating love. Yeah. I'm not creating love. I'm just becoming a vessel for love. And that's where we're all going. We tap into that. That's inside of us. We get the radio signal. We get the ping. Bing. You turn on. And then from there, you mm. light the way. You you uh, you you show others the path. You become the yeah. pathfinder for this. And then others walk, maybe with you, maybe not. But um, that's the best that we can all do: is you walk your own mm. path, provide the example, and that's how we create the kingdom, man. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It's like it's funny when you your words like the like a little like image popped up in terms of just like the light and it turned into like a lantern where it's just like all we're doing here is like the light's already there it's already trying to shine yeah we're the ones that just have to open it up Mm -hmm. and then direct that light wherever we want to and that's the beautiful aspect of the dance because it's like oh then people be like wait you can open that oh oh you know what i mean like (laughs) open that (laughs) <laughs> we can we each become this like almost you know we we're pulling for those just listen we're pulling open the chest just like the superman right, yeah, right. you know and, and we each become this like divine god and goddess and i exactly. think that's the real like it can be it can be perceived as cheesy if you really haven't tasted what we're talking about but mm-hmm. it's truly the fact that like you realize your position in the play and i have this I say a few mantras every day like like almost like little poems of things and the fourth one it's the last one after a lot like a few different i am things of like affirmations and whatnot but the last line or the first line of the last one is great masterful presence for which i am i love i adore thee Mm -hmm. because then you start to realize your position in the play and i feel like that's like the the seesaw the duality that we have to go through is that we go we're so invested into personhood and this whole egoic existence and then there's this catalyst that causes that almost like flips the scale yeah. And then, you know, we come back into that full blown recognition of like the I am, you know, because the, the scale hits the ground of being. And then there has to be this leveling out point where we realize that there is like, oh, I'm both the horse and the rider. Yep. I'm both the game and the character. You know, mm-hmm. I'm both then I am both life and life is me. You know, there, there is no distinction in this energy. And once you start to really carry that frequency, that's the stuff is where it gains the inertia. And you become that, like you mentioned a snowball earlier of society where it's just like the more that you generate that snow, the more you collect and gather others to generate that. Yeah. And then the like starts to attract like, and like, I feel like this is just a, I hope this serves as like a very inspirational message where it's just like, yo, it just gets juicier. Like, <laughs> right. like this unfoldment in this path. And it's only going to accelerate as the more of us kind of like continue to expand our light. Because yeah, we are that infinite love already. It's like we're the ones containing it. We literally are the ones holding it back. Like it, yeah. it, it's already wanting to like dam and break through it. We're the ones that are like, I just want to open this little tiny gate, this little poke a hole in here. But it's like, no, you know, like life wants us to play again. And that's why I get super excited even talking about this. Because like, man, like the falsehoods that seem that seemingly appear to make this world seem so terrible are such a shadow that when illuminated upon with the truth it's just like oh my gosh this world is so juicy like it's so good and magical already and we just we just forgot forgot man we forgot so i guess i gotta flip the script on you bro because you know 100 episodes deep like what has how has this journey from the beginning transformed your conscious perspective (laughs) (laughs) that's good um man hmm that's a lot of that's a lot of dope chats i don't honestly man i'm still figuring it out i Mm. don't actually even think to ask that question to myself because i'm still in the journey i'm still in that process yeah i haven't ended this and like reflected upon it enough Mm. so i'm kind of doing it right now love it real-time processing is my vibe (laughs) 
I guess what it, it has allowed me to see, even though I already kind of saw it, which is kind of why I started the podcast, but I, I'm able to see through various walks of life, various beliefs, various different identities, mm. the truth prevails. Mm. And we all have, mm. and it's in a lot more people than I thought it was. <laughs> ultimately, the truth is the truth. And if you know, you know. And there's some people out there, there's a lot of people out there that know right now. And yeah. it doesn't matter how you go about it. I've talked to monks. I've talked to religious scholars. I've talked to other YouTubers. I've talked to you. Many <laughs> different people, different countries, yeah. different genders, different looks. But ultimately, my conversations, if anybody is a super fan is and, and has listened to them, <laughs> or at least listened to a good majority of them, you come to find that they all <laughs> revolve around the same topic, and that's love. They all revolve, usually I say the same exact things in every podcast. <laughs> If anyone's listened to him, like there's only so many times you can say, right? Uh, you know, it's all one and it's all about love, right? There's only yeah. so many ways that you can put it. So what I'm trying to say though is like that is what I'm doing is I'm finding out these different paths of finding out that love, you know, because I'm I'm not the most articulate way, I'm I'm not the most articulate person to put it in um to put it in a certain way. So I try to find other people's ways to and how they put it how do mm. how do they put this this truth that we all are and that we all embody like how do they how do they embody it um and that has showed me personally that i don't have to become a monk i don't have to go to mm. school to to learn something because this person did it i don't have to do it because somebody else did it because I think a lot mm -hmm. of us get sucked in like, oh, that's that's this is the way that this person did it. I'm going to follow that same path, which is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with following up others example. But I think ultimately you have to follow your own example. You have to become your own Buddha in your own life, in your own yeah. circumstances, in your own karma, because um, there's no other way to do it. <laughs> if you if you if you want to become a monk because other because you know the robes look cool and it just it looks peaceful but it doesn't feel right to you deep down then don't do it if you don't want to go to school right. and study something because i mean you want to go to school and study something only because somebody else does it and they have a nice way of saying it and they got a nice haircut whatever it is but it doesn't feel right to you don't do it and you, you we truly all have to do what feels right to us and create out of love in the way that we in, in the way that it feels right to us um and tap mm. in and have our own practices and practice yeah. how you really want to practice what do you really want to do because there's countless this countless viewpoints and there's countless different vantage points of this um perspective of this conscious perspective but ultimately <laughs> you have to be able to find that within your own heart and then let that yeah. flourish in your own life. Don't look at anybody else's. Use them as use them almost as proof. Use all right. of these other people's and paths as proof that it's possible. Yes. But once you get sucked in to being like, well, you know, he did it this way, so I'm gonna do it this way too. That's fine. That's okay. But before you do that, make sure you figure out if you really want that for yourself. Because I've had times where I'm like, maybe I should become a monk. Or maybe I should go back to school. Or maybe I should do this. But then ultimately I go in a meditation session. I'm like, no, that's not what I want. And getting back to it, man, we've touched upon this before. We have to re recognize what we really want, what we yeah. really, what we love. And that's different for everybody. It's whatever our karma yields in this life is what we want and what we love. Nobody can tell you. You can exactly. see how other people do it and see if they're authentic in their journeys in following what they like and what they love, use them as an example, like I said. But truly, you have to find that within yourself. And the more conversations that I have with people, the more that I find myself going in and finding out, like, I don't, let me try and rephrase that. How do I put this? The more that I tap in with others and learn from others, the mm. better I can learn from myself. I know that seems Ooh, weirdly counterintuitive, it. but it's like, 
the more that I can see and really authentically tap in with somebody that I know is tapped into themselves, I use them as not as being, well, maybe I should, you know, start growing my hair back out and putting it back in a pony, you know, like, (laughs) (laughs) or maybe I should do something like them. It's not like that. I see like, oh, they're cool. They're doing their own thing. They got their vibe. They got their, they got the sauce. How do I find (laughs) my own sauce? Right. How do I, how do I do what they're doing? They're so wise. They're so, oh, I just, I genuinely am interested in people when I speak to them. And yeah. it's not because I want to try to be like somebody. It's because I want to try to, I want, I want what they got, but not in the way that they got it. So yeah. that is, I think the path for all of us is don't try Absolutely. to be like anybody. Don't try to get sucked in somebody else's narrative. Note it, um, <laughs> take it in, see how they did it, learn from it, but don't get sucked in too much to how they did it because how they yeah. go about this this whole spiritual journey is um is special to yourself and i think 100 if it wasn't then life wouldn't be as fun that's like that's part of the movie is like i'm in my journey you're in yours we have similarities yeah. that we're all the i am we're all the purusha behind the scenes but what makes <laughs> this thing cool you know what Pretty life sure is all was. about like why we're not the i amness anymore and we separated into these individual nodes of consciousness is so we can all have this journey of life which we all play out in our own way so from doing this podcast i it has strengthened that that idea in my head even more so that we are all our own buddha in all of our own way you know, however that we go about it and yeah. uh yeah, that's it, man. It's just kind of like been a, a a way to further my own sense of coming back to that I am. It's like, how do I go about it? And mm. take a little bit from this person, take a little bit from that person, take a little bit from this and that and that, whatever works, leave what works for me, yeah. get rid of what doesn't. And it's that constant process. This is, this is a, a, a learning process for me. This is a whole a this is an exploratory exploratory process of other people's minds yeah. for me and i just so happen to <laughs> film it and, and call it a podcast but in genuine what i'm really doing here is finding out finding out how to live and i see how other people live see mm-hmm. if they're happy and they're being authentic and i'm like okay yeah. and it helps me grow so ultimately mm, i love that summing it up man this whole thing has just helped me grow as an individual by um, by learning from other people's way and how they grow as an individual. And thus we grow together. Maybe the audience will also be on that same path as I am, you know? I love that. <laughs> I love that, man. Well, it's, it puts it into a beautiful understanding when people can come back to the recognition that it's like, listen, this whole life and reference frame we have called, you know, the, I am the self, the beingness we know is me, myself, and I like, that's your gift. That's your unique expression of the divine. Mm-hmm. It's your it's your masterpiece to get to unfold for the world and to study, you know? And when we are able to exchange these different puzzle pieces of perspective, it's like it's all coming from the same board, you know? But we're getting yeah. to see and it just fits in a little bit differently for each person. So the mm-hmm. more that we come in, I love what you said because it's like, yeah, the more that you talk with others, the more you learn about yourself. Cause it's yeah. that we're all holding up mirrors. And I feel like that's really the fundamental, like you, you said it really briefly earlier, but it's like that sense of when you say, I love you to someone and how much that changes the interaction that right there, that recognition of like, Hey, I love you. You mirror of the divine, you eternal source of love. You know what I mean? Like you unchanging presence behind this gaze, mm-hmm. like, and we recognize that's what like each of us are it just becomes such a more happy and free exchange of information. It's like, and it's, again, it's almost like circuit boards, right? We're just like, pink. Once the bridge is connected, it's just like, and the vibe is the, the more you can resonate with someone in conversation, the more you get lost in the sauce, like yeah. you can just exchange more and more information. And that's where you just start to build this great picture of like, Oh, wow. Like they went through that. I'm going to reflect back this entire chapter of my life. Cause it makes me look back on those years. Yeah. You know, it's like, you really can change your life like infinite amount of time. So I just gotta say, thank you for letting that one zero zero be that, you know, this epic, <laughs> this epic series and saga thus far. And I'm, you know, all the blessings and magic to you as this journey continues to unfold, because 
it's these types of things that are offering people a quick path to real truth, like really quickly, if they're if they're really in that real recognizes real wavelength where they can recognize the truth being talked about in all these different podcasts, man, like all the different guests, it's been juicy. Like, and that's one of the reasons why I love it too. Cause I'm like, Ooh, cool. I want to talk to them. I want to look into this <laughs> stuff. Like, because you can gain so many different tools and methods to like explore this game of life. Like, you know, we say, follow your heart, but it really is like both a cliche cheesy catch line. Cause it's like, so it's so thrown out there, but like, it truly is the compass to this playground and life is an mm. experiment. Like life is an experiment. You're living an experiment. You are a living experiment. You know, you can unfold that a few different ways, but like, that's your guide. Like that's your, you have a strategy guide with all the different modalities of like astrology, human design, numerology. You have some like trump cards where you can see different traps of like cycles and patterns through some stuff like yeah. cosmically. And then you have your heart. And that's the only thing that's going to help you figure out, like, it's like a metal detector. It's like, Ooh, what sings with the most? Yeah. It's like, that's going to guide you to the next adventure in this journey or this next quest in your life. Like play this shit like a video game. Honestly, like, man. and it just gets so dope. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Seriously. Well, I think it is a game. Life is just a giant Facts. game. It's the greatest yeah. game of all time. Well, it's look what we game. create as above. So below we create what we are, the microcosm, yeah. the macro, like, mm-hmm. or the macro to the micro, like we create video games. Y'all really realize that you're a, all the things that you're doing right now is just a divine like game of existence like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. don't take life so seriously have more fun have more have more play you know give yourself more permission and freedom just to be silly like yeah. you have to come back to that frequency yeah, and man. if you don't know what it's like go hang out or i wouldn't say hang out because you might have some weird shit go down but go walk through a playground go to a park and walk through a playground and just feel the energy shift yeah man Truly, uh, unless you become like children, you may never enter the kingdom of heaven. And what is that? As a kid, we we didn't really hold on to attachments. We loved unconditionally. Curious. Curious. Sense of wonder. Yeah. We played. Yeah, played. Yeah, because it's play, a game. You ce- gotta play it. <laughs> celebrations. Well, celebration is super important. You know, it's a, it's a real way to integrate. It's a real way to raise your vibration. And in truth, like all the ancient practices that all of our cultures have done throughout the world, all of their community rituals, the dances, the bringing the ancestors, the, the different celebrations and holidays and feasts, they all start with celebration, raise your vibration up. And then we, and then we, we worship, we praise. So for me, I feel like Again, I really just want to bring it back to that sense of like, just fall in love with everything in life that it presents you and like, see what unfolds. Yeah, that's the goal. Mm, let's continually test. Like, <laughs> love, you know what I mean? Like, how do It you really does. Love? That's that's the thing is, but it's that's the, the journey is the destination. There's another cliche, but that's the <laughs> that's the test of our life is like, how do you love everything? I can say it right now. You can say it. You know, oh, yeah. love everything, love it, love it. It's all love. But then somebody cut you off in traffic tomorrow, and you're like, "Fuck you, bro." So it's like, how do you stay on that, man? I think it's possible. It's possible, and that's why we have these modalities, like you said. Like we continually have to remember that, but also know and recognize that no matter what, we're going to be tested every day that goes by. There's always going to be another test. You're going to stub your toe, and <laughs> not even I don't know. Just like there's going to be things. something's going to go down. Something's going to happen in your life. But if you can continually remember, come back to that I amness. Always come back to it. Always. Rem- I don't think you can remind yourself enough. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can't say it enough. Right? I love that about the uh, the video too, where he was saying like the the fail safe mechanism. I love that line where it's just like, just remember that you got distracted. Just that yeah. whole process of you being like, oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Because it's like, oh, thank you for saying that. Because like, there's so much of a pressure and burden people put on on themselves, like in this path and process that when they do find themselves getting lost, or distracted or caught up in the mind that like, it somehow serves as another opportunity to say trapped in that like self worthless shame, failure type of trap, where it's just like, no, like, the whole point of the game is like, you have to keep coming back to yourself. And the more you do it, the less inertia that all these other distractions have. And energetically, yep. it just gets easier and easier to look away. It doesn't draw yep. your attention away. It comes by less. 
mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, I think that's funny where we talk about the indoctrination centers where it's just like, man, could you imagine how easy you could fix schools if we had like conscious creators and artists and people that were in all aspects of life creating a curriculum? Oh, your physical education. Well, we're going to have some personal trainers be in charge of that to teach like bodily imbalances. So kids can learn to heal their injuries. If they like mess up their ankle, it's like what to, to look for and worry about. Yeah. Oh, we'll teach them human design. So they know their energetic system. Teach them mm-hmm. qigong so they learn some expression. You know, we'll teach them how to ground in earth. Oh, we'll also get them into all the cool different arts and expressions so they learn how to dance, and they yeah. never lose that connection of expression through movement. Mm-hmm. You know, like where you can ex- enter into those ecstatic, playful dance like moments of just playing. You yeah. know, it's like how quick we can do stuff. It's like yo, like we can make this, we can make this life really dope. Mm-hmm. really really quick if we empowered people instead of teaching them how to identify with the tool of the mind and then yeah. becoming lost in it yep. for years identifying with your thoughts like if, a, if your first class in kindergarten is just like all right let's we're gonna learn our position in the play of life like <laughs> uh yeah man, i've taught it to know. kids dude it's so fun really? it's so fun it's so fun okay so i work at the I work for my own, I have my own business, wellness and fitness development. Um, But some of that stuff is like meditation um, and instruction in those natures. And there is a, uh, it's the Linwood police department. Every summer I do like a few things with like their summer camp that they do. And it's because like the kids love it so much. So each year I teach them a different way of like how to like use meditation to level up. And I always express it like a video game. And I always teach people because I always do like a group meditation first, like a little guided meditation with the sound bowl, a little bit of breath work. Um, And one of the the ways that I intro this exercise and anyone who works with kids, feel free to use it. Just mention me, Peter Lucas, full spectrum performance, (laughs) because this is some IP, but it's you, you have a, you have, you get all the kids to do it. Right. So it's like, you pick up some, like, you're like, okay, who wants to pick some volunteers? So boom, boom, boom. One, two, three, you have one of them stand in the middle you have. And we all say, this is you, you know, that sense of self, we all know me, myself, and I, and we have all the kids sit in a circle and that represents like the inner and the outer. Yeah, yeah. So we have one of the kids just screaming and running around the circle in the outer because it's playful. It's silly. And I was just like, this is some stuff happening inside or outside. You forgot your homework. And it's like, I forgot my homework. I forgot my homework. So the kids <laughs> get silly. And then I was like, and you, you're going to be the thought because of this. And it's just like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And it was teaching kids their position in the chaos of things. Wow. And to recognize that, like, there are going to be things in the meditation. We there's a few different things you can go in the exercise. I'm going to keep private, but like, because that's <laughs> just for me in terms of like I the, it, yeah, you know what I mean? Because it's a it's a really powerful tool to teach kids like meditation very quickly, mm-hmm. because they're like, oh, okay, you know. And when you can teach things with play, it's even juicier. So like, because then they're into it, and then they're entertained, and then they're like, oh, this is fun. Like, then you make it, the curiosity gets like triggered and then it's just like, they're full blown into it. So then they're into the breath work, they're into the meditation. So, uh, by the end of it, you know, we come together in a group after we do like some of the different like worksheets that I, that made for them to kind of like explore these themes of stuff that comes up. And one of them was just like, all right, so did any of you guys see anything in all of them start just like raising their hands and wanting to share the colors, the energies that they saw. Uh. So it's like, you start to see them get more giddy. And I was just like, all right, how many of them are your guys' favorite color? And like 90% of them raise their hand. Mm. And I was just like, interesting. And I was just like, how many of them was a color that they've never even thought of before? And like the other percentage of them, I was like, well, try wearing those colors and see how you feel. Hmm. So they check back in and they're just like, day was awesome. All this cool stuff happened. You know what I mean? So it's like, you start to just show people the magic that like, we're literally, as I say, like the elders in training, we're going to be developing like as these new generations are coming up. Mm -hmm. So like just these different tools and tips that we do for ourselves, when we, when we give the youth them, they're opening so many different avenues of exploration because it's like, they're not, they're not going to have to get caught up in so many of the cul-de-sacs that yeah. we caught got, got caught up in. Yeah. But I know that our generations got caught up in them so we can teach them and really remember why it's important not to get caught up in them. Yeah. How to teach them with integrity so we remain in alignment with these truths. 
you know, to like really empower people and to awaken the sovereignty within each being that God and God is like that divine connection again. So like, it's wild to see like how dope stuff like that can really change people's lives. But like, I feel like the more that we each lean into our own aspects of like self-care and healing, like the more that we're going to inspire others to like branch out into these modalities and even like expose like more and more people to them. Cause like the, the thing is the kids, I think there was probably like 10%, 12% more that new meditation and like practice it. So like yeah. the first summer, I remember it was like three kids. The next, it was like eight and then now it's like a dozen. Damn. So it's like, I can't even imagine that, which is just the sign of the times. I can't imagine kids meditating, but why not? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, their parents do it, right? Oh yeah. So when you have a when you have a conscious unit, when you have a conscious family, it's like you teach like you can just tell. Like kids that are super chill, mellow, they listen. Like yeah. they they ask questions. Most important thing, they have the mm -hmm. courage to always ask questions because they're encouraged in an environment like a conscious container. And like having some families that have children that I work with, like meditation wise and working with one family in particular, like and that's like this example is like when you have a conscious unit, it changes the ways all the normal teenage plights and stripes get experienced. Yeah. Like a 14 and a 17 year old are two of the sons for um, a meditation, like family that I work with. And dude, it's dope. It's dope to see. Mm -hmm. It's dope to see. Yeah. Because they're going through like, you know, those existential teen crisis moments in like such a safe place to ask a question. So you don't have to like do something stupid to figure it out. Yeah. Like yeah. where you have a parent that can help that can empower, that can give you the tools to, to, to question things yourself before you have to like, mm. that's amazing, man. Yeah. So it's like, it's inspiring. There's a lot going down. There's a lot going yeah. down, Gary. We're creating a better world, each of us. And, it, and to see how everyone's doing it, it's like, I love yeah. it yeah man that's amazing to have a childhood without like the confusion and the without the you know the, the worry and the you know i don't i don't know how else to put it but yeah like a more stable childhood with that that's cool that you're doing that man it's very that's very uh very honorable Oh, thanks, bro. It's it's unfolded naturally. And I feel like that's why, you know, I've looked at it and like, what's life really presenting each of us? And it's this, it's this textbook of lessons to really build a better world in the future. You know, it's to go through those yes, trials, yes. those trials of fire. You know, we, I feel like a lot of us, a lot of the main themes of people who are in this wavelength now is like the loneliness, the sadness, the pain, like some mm -hmm. suffering loss, like, and to see that we all made it through it because of a certain isness about us. You don't know who, because some people didn't. You know, I know quite a few in this path who didn't. And that's the stuff that's like to be cultivated through such shadow and refine the light is only for one purpose to spread it. Yeah. You know, so each of us are doing it in the lives that we're, we're creating and cultivating for ourselves. And, exposing others to and it's again this culture change it's this culture shift and i feel like when i look at it in the big scale of things man it's like it's us because I, I really can't fathom any other generation able to do it yeah, like man. we're 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 literally a bridge between eras of like old technology to new technology to note from no technology to new technology it's like yeah. i feel like in a great way to say it is if you remember smoking and non-smoking sections <laughs> this is you are the person yeah. i'm talking about <laughs> That's so true. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I do. I remember smoking. Facts, bro. I remember that stuff like, wait, what? Yeah, that was the thing, man. There used to be smoking sections <laughs> at restaurants and in public places. Every place had a smoking section. Yeah, it was left oh, or wow. right. Generally, it was like left was non-smoking, right yeah. was smoking. Whoa. That, I, you can't even fathom that nowadays. This is the smoking section of the restaurant where people smoke, and over here nobody smokes. Like that's so weird. Oh man, that's craziness. But go I to remember, a yeah. Go to a Sherry's, a Denny's, uh, you know, like it was uh, old, like IHOP, like yeah, left or right. Oh, left, left, please. That's a good way to put it, man. Yeah, we are the go-between because we understand, we understand the old, the ways of the old, but we also understand the ways of the new. Like we're also hip to culture. Yeah. And we're also under, we also understand technology too. Like we yeah. we're not 
so gone with this technology. Like we don't, we actually know how to use it. Yeah. We're not lost with it. We're not born immersed in the identification of like, yeah. this is what kids do on the phone, by the way. <laughs> if you want a fun little game, you can do like, you can tell a generation like, Oh, uh, answer your phone. We're, I'm going to call you Ver- like yeah. landline versus the kids, my niece and nephew. It's, <laughs> it's terrifying, but it's that's like, funny. but that's like, that's those the palm generations where it's just yeah. like these devices that they've been on since they were babies. Yeah. Like, yeah, we had life without technology, but we grew up with it. We grew into it. Like we grew literally like alongside this technology, but we had a time like my childhood. I didn't have a cell phone until probably 12, Gosh. 14 around there. Yeah. I, I was going to say like, I'm going to think like high school, almost like 15, 14, yeah. no 14. Yeah, so like I my most of my childhood I was not engrossed in technology for the most part. Yeah. And if I was, it was on a dedicated place at my house in the yeah, computer. N64, right? like Yeah, it wasn't like it is nowadays where it's literally <laughs> attached to our body anywhere we go and social media didn't mean much like MySpace was just coming out. Totally different monster. Aim, but, your little yeah, messaging AIM. that was Shout out Aim. We got to bring back <laughs> Aim, man. I like Aim. Aim was cool. P55 Fro boy was good. What's your name? <laughs> that What's your was my name back. <laughs> that's funny i don't remember mine that's funny though. Yeah. it's so good though yo because like when you look at it it's funny though like even just you expressing it another little thing popped in the beingness where it was just like you take a step back and look at it it makes perfect sense why because you have the ascension avenue of technology of where like mm-hmm. that's leading our culture and that's the ascension so you have a bunch of kids who are already born in this recognition of interconnectedness of like a lot of different consciousness themes changed after the internet so it's like you have already people that's like oh i can experience a kid or families are all over the world blah blah blah. i talk to my grandma on the phone like you know they're like i can see my grandma it's not like just hearing her and seeing her once a year like there's a different level of intimacy that they have with experience and that's why it's the attachment path is terrifying for them because it's so easy but Mm -hmm. you look at us right and we were born in the old school. We literally were born grounded. And it's one of the things spiritually that I actually got caught up in and realized the importance of is like, you have to master grounding before you really master ascension. Cause I mastered ascension first and like the recognitions, the awakenings, all that shit. And was just so dissociated for like a year of mm-hmm. just like living very more so attached to the pole beyond the veil, very dreamlike life, not yeah, super yeah. like connected here i feel like it's a very big issue but like that's why it's trippy when you look at it like this is like oh shit man like it's just another validation of just like yeah we are that we are that generation because we were born in the groundness of what it's of what it really means to play as a kid the street light generation kids like mm-hmm. go hang out go get your feet in the dirt like yeah, yeah. and go adventure in the forest and then we're, we've gotten a chance to grow till we can really bridge our understanding of what's really important back here that mm-hmm. keeps us what centered, harmonized with that truth. Yeah, so yeah. we can explore an adventure and really make the most of the technology. Yeah. And I feel like that's where it's like the the compasses of the heart that those generations have been born into. It's like, ooh, like we're the gods, the elders yeah. in training. Elders I, I really hope training. that awakens some people who are listening because it's like you are the elder in training. Stop looking. It was an experience I had in a breathwork journey. And it was before I started doing some of my um, meditation offerings or like uh, plant medicine offerings and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And it was me trying to console my younger self crying. And I was just like, dude, I am trying everything. I do not know what to do. Yeah. So it's like, pick. so just as like, we're looking on zoom, you see the two screens. You had a trip. This was a medicine, uh, a breath journey. Oh, wow. Okay. It was before I started to, it was before, like I started to offer different journeys for people gotcha, as well gotcha, gotcha. so it was like this moment of me like really questioning myself of like am i ready for this like am i really like because again like I'm, I'm always ensuring that it's the most loving safe container for whatever i'm trying to build like and i want to i want people to experience this knowing of what life is like beyond the veil mm-hmm. and like to create containers for that's really important for me so i was like very persecuting myself during this time of just like being very strict, like, all right, we're going to like meticulously comb through the beingness to make sure there's nothing left here to like interfere with this container, you know? And it was this sense of like, you know, we're looking at zoom consciousness wise. It's like one screen. I was looking at my body. One screen was just kind of like, um, looking at this image of myself with my youth. Another screen was just like witnessing like my energy field. 
Mm-hmm. And then the other like screen of awareness was just kind of like the sounds and things of like people and like the facilitators and stuff around me. Mm-hmm. And the, as things were getting intense on all the other screens, like I was just kind of like freaking out with my younger self. Like, what do I do? I can't stop him to crying. And I was like calling to like guides and ancestors in my team. And all of a sudden it was just like a, you know, a tap on the shoulder and I turn around and it was this like silver haired Fox. And I was just like, who's this? And it, it's me when I'm older wow. and it just turns around and I'm, he's looking at me. And it's like, I can see him aged and it's just like, I can feel the energy. And it was one of these moments where it was just like a little, like a little tap Sasuke tap on the forehead. Like you dummy, like you're calling for yourself. You realize this, right? Like you are already what you are searching for. You are already that power like it's you come back to that knowing and i was just like duh you know like that divide like aha like ah like i seemingly forgot you know but that's in that download that came from that is just the recognition where it's just like yo like we're all the elders of what is going to lay that that is already laying a foundation of this new world we're living into Mm -hmm. and the more that we really step into that and lean into our intuition and really trust our gut, you know, and put ourselves in the positions where we can hone and refine those tools. Like it's just going to unfold more and more magic. And the beauty thing, the beautiful thing here is like each person's going to have their own dope ass movie that you're going to be able to talk about and share and, and just show people how, like how awesome, like you're living. And it's going to inspire people to be like, Hey, what are you doing? You know? And like, and that's like really the call of the universe right now is for everyone just to like connect to pour love onto yourself and just to like live, like live rad. I would say like radical authenticity is a mm-hmm. big like way to put it. Like, cause it's just like, cause authenticity is going to be your medicine. Cause it's going to put you in the situations and the, and the positions of influence and like confirmation from life. And it's that sense too, where it's going to start to refine and build your own light again. Cause it's like, we're each shining the divine already but we've all also been tasked to shine the unique light and gift that we are. Mm-hmm. And to be able to do that through love in tandem with that in which we know that's where we come to realize, like the only thing we were ever tasked with in, in this life is really being that gift. We are to life yeah. fully being that self in which we were tasked and gifted with the skills and the ability to see certain things like, and to smell and taste and jump and, you know, like whatever it is we have, like it's our soul's mission to shine that light. That's it, man. That's it. Amen. Well said. Wow. That's good, man. I might use that one for a clip. That was good. Do it, bro. It's <laughs> that <was> awesome. <laughs> no, that's that's so true, and it's so. I can see it. I can see it, man. Like you said, like it's it's realistic. It's here, and you know why? Because that wavelength is so simple. Mm-hmm. It's so simple to come to that. It's not might not be easy to do. Like we all have our skeletons in our closet and stuff we got to go through. But it's simple. It's so easy to tap yeah. on the to to touch upon that wavelength because it's it's here now. It's already here. We're already that love. <laughs> it's just hidden yeah. in plain sight. We're already that. So once you know how to tap in and once you know where that is in yourself, and it's like this. It's easy. And it only gets easier. And as it gets easier, it actually gets more enjoyable to do. You know, it doesn't ever get old to be able to do that tap into the one. It's actually gets more enjoyable as the journey goes on. And eventually, I guess you, you, yeah, you make that your life. You fully embody that love. You fully embody the heart and then everybody else does. And we all are, are a different embodiment of what it means to be a human being. And it's so simple, man. It's really, it seems distant because like I said, the world seems darker. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of bleakness, yeah. but it's really not. It's right here. <laughs> it's right now, man. It's right here, right now. And all it takes is like sometimes just saying, step back. I am. Just come back to the witness. Maybe take a breath. You know, take a few breaths. Mm. But it's so simple. It's right here, right now. We are all capable. Literally, we are all capable right now at this very moment of being enlightened. Every single human being. All it takes is for us to tap into what our true self is. It's not so yeah. far-fetched. It, like, it seems like it, right? We it do it every like- day. Yeah. What we do, what, tap in, you're saying? We tap in every day. We just overlook it. 
Yeah. Because like the mind is always so like fixated upon like the biggest, flashiest, most ridiculous thing. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. but the truth is just like always low key in the cut, just chilling. Like, (laughs) but like we're always present. We're always, we're always that witness. And it's those moments in the day that are the peaks or like that we call the, the time skips, you know, when you're, when you're having such a juicy experience where you're just so immersed in the now, it's just like, you're just awestruck you're just like beauty play excitement like connection it could even be like with a partner like sexually like in the moment like when you two are in that then that vulnerable space of just like pure just connection like that's tasting the divine right there Mm -hmm. you know like there's so many moments that we just take for granted because we're just not really given the language to show the appreciation for what they are yeah or like the and or the understanding of like the day-to-day like dialogue that we don't realize that oh why you always feel so cool and calm and good in the morning for some people at least that like when there's no thoughts is because like that's the sauce right there you know and then and then the first distraction comes in and then the stories begin lost in the sauce Mm -hmm. and then it's just and then you just get caught up in the play your ear is just oh what's going on over here yeah yeah, you know do a cold plunge in the morning and feel that bliss when you come up from underneath the water where everything just stops. Yeah. You know, like there's, there's taste and glimpses that we can get and do. And I think that's again, like the healing modalities, learning to understand like the ingredients that you're at, like tasting the ingredients you're cooking with. Mm -hmm. Like when you know, that's what the whole point of them is. You're just like, Oh, okay. Less is more. I just need to get out of the way. And then you Mm -hmm. can really experience the juiciness of each thing where it's just like, Oh man, like, I couldn't even imagine getting into like breath work and things with active mind. Cause the whole point is just to like, let the body do its thing. So to be able to just like flip the switch and just like post up and just be like, all right, do your breathing. We'll wait until it starts. Like, yeah. you know, it's yeah. a powerful thing where it's just like, wow, cool. I'm able to get the most out of it. Yeah. You know? And I think that's the thing of life is like, when we really get out of the way of like the assumptions, the expectations, like the, what we think life should be doing, for us, you know, and just witness to what it's providing. Yeah. You know, like if we just have, if we just remove that resistance, then I guess the easiest way to say it is life just becomes effortless again. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it becomes a flow. You reach this flow state. Yeah. yeah. Ups and downs, twists and turns. Mm-hmm. You fall into the Tao. But nothing's ever a mistake. There is no wrongs. You are the divine. You are perfection. How could there be such a thing? Exactly, man. (laughs) Don't let your mind convince you that there is a mistake or make you feel guilty about something you said or did in the past or something that you did wrong, quote unquote, or something that looks wrong or there is no wrong. It's all right. Even in the darkest things of your life and that you can see, it's all, it's all perfect, man. It's all imperfectly perfect here. So if you can resonate, Mm. if you can reside as that witness consciousness, as that greater self, then you can see that perfection in all of it, in all of its impurities and imperfections, and that's including yourself. Yeah, You have to forgive yourself first. That's the most important thing. Forgive the darkness that's within yourself to be able to um, be at that point, you know, to mm. be able to like see, because like even yeah. if you have that vantage point, you're still going to see some inadequacies within your own being. It's just going to come up. From our conditionings or our karma or past lives whatever it is there's always going to be that that springs up but with that mm. right perspective you can see yeah like you said man it's all for us this is literally all for us to remind us to get back on the saddle of the one consciousness and keep on galloping <laughs> down keep on right? galloping home man it's the journey it's a like never-ending journey it doesn't end that's the thing. no but that's the beauty of it like it may seem scary to somebody that doesn't know like what do you mean it doesn't end like, well, ah. I, thought, I thought enlightenment, <laughs> that's it. But no, it's like the end, the beginning is the end. Like the end is the journey. It's hard to explain, uh, but like well, that's, that's the gist. It's the journey. It's so like, it's so like, they've been using the metaphors and imagery for so long, but it's like, it really is like, hey, you know, you think of how beautiful the journey is and you're just going down the river, mm-hmm. you know? And then once you get to the ocean and you experience the ocean for the first time, you're like, oh shit, the ocean, like, <laughs> it's yeah. still the ocean like there's mm-hmm. no there's no end to such an exploration mm-hmm. and you can go as mm-hmm. deep as you want and i think that's the beautiful thing here when we look at it is like the true opening up of like what 
we can enter into as like a society and as like a species consciousness, a form of energy, the divine beings we are, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it really can be dependent upon how empowering we want to each be. Because if we utilize, think about it like this, if we all actually utilize the tools that have been in our society for centuries, like since the beginning, like the first, some of the first things they chose to write about is some of these things like numerology, astrology, yeah. uh, human design is more of a recent one, but it's like incredibly powerfully accurate just in yeah, terms I've been of like reading about that recently. I've actually well, recently heard about that. So this is a synchronicity in my life, but, uh, oh, yeah, man. it seems pretty in depth. I, it's I def- do you have any like good resources you can send me after like about like, yeah, how to sure. digest it? Because like, I look at the, the, my yeah. chart and I'm like, well, this doesn't really mean much to me. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's definitely some things to look at. Yeah, yeah. There's some things to look at because, you know, there's different aspects of like, and for me, I got into a lot of these different modality, or I should say I got into, I was exposed to some of them early on, but I never, I never believed in those things. I was very skeptic. So I was like, meh, but I got reintroduced probably like this last three years to some of them. And each time I learn more and more about it, I'm just like, wow, like if we knew this when we were in our youth, yeah, yeah. you know, for me, I've, it's cause it's, it's all been validated. Like, you know, your astrology is kind of like a strategy guide on different patterns and themes and different stuff that's going to come up. So like, for example, Virgo season just ended. September was wild for a lot of people because there was a lot of crazy different placements, but because of the Virgo nature to stuff and that era of like transitioning from summer to fall. It's all about refinement. It's all about cleaning things. It's all about limiting your energy connections. It was a very big tumultuous period for many because it was a lot of chaotic events that caused like thinning of things from their life, like a letting Mm -hmm. go, whether it be people or things. And it enters us into like this Libra season, you know, which is balance into your life. Exactly. Bringing balance, but it's really all, it has a lot of that Venetian energy where it's really all about that um, self-love. You know, and then it has a lot of themes of Jupiter, at least in my chart, where it's just like your your whole inner looking, you know, your whole outer looking. Like it's time to really question that. We just had a full moon in Aries, which is like super warring, but meant to bring about the things that again are causing you to get put off your center. Yeah, yeah. Because it's Libra season, so it's mm-hmm. all about recognizing the things that cause that. Right. The, so the signs are there, man. It's all like signs for us. Yeah. Yes, it's mm-hmm. all a tool. It's all yeah. roadmap. And the thing is, like, it's not something that limits you in terms of, oh, I'm like this. I'm supposed to be this today. It's that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. But it's something that can give you a little bit more of a uh, almost like an assisted GPS when some shit's getting crazy in your life where you're like, wow, like really three times today, three mm-hmm. times. And then it's going to be like, oh, it's this and this. OK, retrograde stuff checks out. <laughs> but yeah. that same yeah. thing, because it just talks about how our ancestors used to understand the energies of the universe, because yeah. just as we're passing through things, just as we're changing, life is changing. There's certain themes that it's like, oh, retrograde season. You probably shouldn't start a new project, but build all the bridges to get it going. Yeah, yeah. You know, because all because and so it's it's again, it's recognizing the energy around you. Numerology is understanding a lot of different things about your soul. Yeah. Like what really makes that heart smile, like how to follow your heart. We'll look into some of that stuff. Mm. And then, you know, you have human design, which helps you understand your whole energy system, what foods and things work better for your body. And again, I stumbled into this stuff after I'd already noticed a bunch of patterns in my diet and how things have changed where I'm like, when I really resonate and I'm like, oh, my human design said that interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's again, it's not stuff that's limiting your experience, but it's just giving you a blueprint and a guide of just like, hey, like here's how to optimize your body. And when you look at it like a video game, it makes perfect sense, yo. Exactly. Cause it's like your, it's your, it's your, uh, your stat sheet, right? You know, you yeah, have some yeah. people have that circle with that little, like all that weird polygon with all those random like edges to it, your attack, your defense, your intuition, like all this different yeah. stuff. Like mm-hmm. that's literally all of this. Like we, we figure mm-hmm. out our presets. We have our soul contracts. We come in here with our teams. We like, yeah. we already have things that we're meant to be doing. Strengths, weaknesses, yep, skills. And, And all they're meant to do is, again, give you the idea and the blueprint of how to better round yourself, Yeah. how to better fill out that chart, how to better tap into the divine, where you're Mm going to be more susceptible to addictions, to attachments, to letdowns, to, you know, to all the shortcomings. Like, and it's just meant to, again, empower us. So like, imagine if every person utilized all these tools, remembered that this is just like, you know, a playground and we're taught all this stuff, like. Yeah. conscious world in a second bro in a second it's really that simple man it could happen right now 
it, it, it can happen right, right now. now. Ha. Right now. Imagine that. Everyone just, whoa. Shit. It's all connected. It's all one. Because well, and then it'll look. Go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to say, that's what you realize from the strategy guides is that, yeah. well, first you realize that it's, it's all connected. Everything is just one vibration. So a skeptic would say, well, astrology doesn't make any sense. How does like the position of certain celestial objects light years away affect my personality? Well, locality doesn't matter. Once you realize that everything is connected, you can see those oh. celestial objects are actually like there's a there's a there's an order to that. So like there's an order to everything here. There's one there's one flow. So ba- yeah. based upon what you just described as like your birthday in certain numbers, right? On your mm-hmm. birthday, um, or so it doesn't not even your birthday. Like just certain times when like I don't know how to how to put it, man. Maybe you can put it a little bit better, but just like, um, like the order. Uh, like astrology and numerology and human design is based upon like certain novel moments in time. And yeah. whenever you were born or whenever like a certain thing happens in an astrological season, it plays out based upon the order of the entire universe. Yeah. Right. And that comes mm-hmm. down to you and your personality, like the order of everything in these celestial objects. People will be like, how does the this positioning here and the Mercury retrograde, how does that truly affect me? It's because of like, the order that it happened in, in, cool. in that novel, in that novel moment, like yeah. that novelty is bringing about like our, our blueprint here as a human being, like our human design is based upon not just like the body and the human design, but literally like our connection to every single thing in the universe yeah, and those exactly. subtle energies that are being, you know, um, put into our being from other objects maybe the gravity or whatever you want to call it or some kind of energy that we don't even know but it's all if it's if everything is one you can't go around that truth if you if you can swallow the pill that all (laughs) is one and one is all then obviously astrology has to hold some kind of merit in your being i'm talking to skeptics here if there's any skeptics listening that doesn't believe in (laughs) astrology but it's like (laughs) all is one and we live in this giant universe everything is interconnected every single thing and that seems so unfathomable it doesn't even make any sense but once you can have that direct experience of everything is one everything then it makes a lot more sense 100 percent. well it's like if we look at what, you know, again, like we look at love, I've, I spoke upon it like love is openness. If, if the creator created a womb of creation where we have like all the different universes in this little, in this little egg, this little womb of life, yeah. and it all just varies at different frequencies and vibrations and things mm-hmm. that we, which we know is that's how it is. Like we yeah. the Western science has figured a lot of this stuff a long time ago now and that everything is energy. So when we look at it in like the kind of new agey of like, you look at your dates and stars astrology with like the old Vedic understanding, you can very much so see that astrology is just the imprint of the universe's energy for your first breath. Wow. Yeah. So it all, it. so it all comes back to breath and like how this life is that first in where it's just like, that's the, that's literally the prana. Your beingness is like, <laughs> Yeah. being programmed on in this moment, playground in that moment your birth in your time of your birth because human design goes by the time too right like what time it was yeah it, human wow. design astrology i mean numerology is like a lot of the days and things like that but it's all relating to like the energies at your placement the energy yeah. of when your soul came right through yeah you know you know we can think and that's why there's also different things to look in terms of conception like when people were conceived we're not super ritualistic yeah. or, or ceremonial about that but like you know you could literally do the same thing for the energy of the universe at your conception Dude, how that, inter- that last night i'm so glad you brought that up keep going <laughs> it's keep divine going. timing in all yeah. things bro yeah. but it's that same sense of just like when you look at like how sacred and revered life is on this grand scale of interconnectedness it's just like yo like there is so much weight and merit to understanding how your energy interrelates with this matrix. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the importance of like learning human design and practicing modalities like yoga and Qigong. And so it's like, you know how your energy feels, you know, like to do check-ins before you go into social settings. So you know where things are coming from because we're vortexes and we're indiscriminately taking in energy all the time. And if you don't have a protection, you don't have a filter, you don't have an understanding. Now all these different energies get lost in the sauce within you. 
Yeah. And that yeah. that's the importance of human design is like knowing what foods and different things can really like fuel your system. Mm -hmm. What energies or paths of least resistance are going to be your weakness? You know, how to, it really helps with how to communicate with people because there's a yeah. good chunk of people out there who are projectors and all of those folk are all about the invitation, meaning they won't go out in life for the most part, it's one of the things that they have to overcome in truth, but it's like their, their conditioning baseline is like, they wait for people to, to offer them the op opportunity, like mm -hmm. their growth and life changes happen because of someone else's decision. Like I'm a generator. So it's like, I produce all my own stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm my own motor, trust the gut. Like, so that's way different. And I'll use, um, I'll actually use my ex-wife as an example. Uh, it's a sense of, she was a projector. I'm a generator. We were an amazing team. We were able to manifest and create a lot of dope things in a really little time. And we were very, and like, I was able to really level up my spiritual beingness because of the different things we were doing in the chaos that she would create because of this aspect of the invitation, because as a generator, mine's frustration because it generators are in manifesting generators, very good slave race. Cause we have all the energy to do it all the time, whenever, but we're not in a world made for us. Because the generators are the ones that have natural intuition. They're the ones that a lot of people should be asking things of because their body literally is a compass. It'll be like, no, nope, uh -uh, not shouldn't do it. And I've refined and honed myself because of my knowledge of human design to really have my intuition and my like gut knowing in sync. If it's not a hard yes, it's a hard no. Uh -huh. If it's a mediocre yes, it's a hard no. And when I don't listen to it, chaos ensues. And it's not a lesson of love like the hard yes. It's a lesson of suffering or some bullshit, you know? So it's like, it's learning that interrelation, but in understanding like my partner, she was always waiting for the invitation. So my communication instantly changed because it wouldn't be any open-ended statements. It would be a direct question. Yeah. And instantly things changed. Mm -hmm. I would starting to see things in her life, but I also started to pick up patterns where it's like, she wouldn't grow unless something in her life happened. Mm -hmm. Like someone offered a job, someone offered this, a different opportunity to go there and work this. And you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, yeah. and the same thing with my like being this, like we were both stunted in our relationship. And I, I use this to kind of recognize where it's like, okay, like this isn't going to, this relationship doesn't serve either of us. And out of love, I know this is what her soul needs to grow. Yeah. And it's what I need to grow too, because I'm always investing my energy into something that's just failing all the time. So we see like this decoupling, my life catapults, all this crazy shit happens in the past like year and a half almost now, like, and she's starting to grow and enter into like the deeper path herself mm. because of all the different things that are now effects of someone else's cause. Oh yeah. Damn. Because I, cause that's how it went down. So like, but that's crazy, man. Yeah. So it's like, you can start you know to that see that dynamic like, before, like as this was going on, or you kind of like, I learned about now? it. I learned about it in our last like year and a half. Wow. So I used like the last like year and a half to really put it all out in the field and try my best and trying to keep it together. And then I just, at that point I was like, all right, my time frame from when I would give is done. So yeah, some exciting. actions went down and things happened, but it was the sense of, you know, it's, it's again, life is always having things happen for us. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I really do want to let the listeners know. It's like, I, I practice that with, with a lot of, real life experience, you know, like my father passed last September and it's a lot of it is because a lot of the crazy stuff that we've seen in our world unfolding, you know, and when we look at it in this light, it's still holding that connection with source when things happen that you don't want. Yeah. It's still holding that trust and that faith and that knowing that, and that remembrance that it's all divine timing. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's all divine timing. It's all happening for us. So how, how can I really utilize this, this opportunity that life created? And I'm not going to say it is a loss because it's just a transformation. Like energy doesn't die. And that's when we come exactly. to really understand the essence yeah. of what it is we're talking about is that like death isn't something that's so scary anymore because there is no such thing. Yeah. I have a I have a, a pretty deep connection because my father and I actually didn't really have a good like connection in terms of our personal like peopling because we were very opposing in terms of our perspectives. Mm -hmm. And we had closure in the end because of a lot of the things that, again, life gifted and graced me with to have that, those opportunities to have that type of closure. But I feel more closely and intimately connected with my father now that he's passed. Mm. 
like when in, in meditations, I can always ask the universe. I can always ask him for a sign and it pops up. Wow. And that's something that to me, again, continues to validate and confirm all of these knowings we're stumbling and stumbled into that there is way more than this great mystery to of life than this play, than just this physical, this physicality that we get to live. Yeah, exactly, man. That there is that's so the much more thing. beyond this. Yeah, man. And that's the purpose of all these different modalities. It's like the more we sink in and dive deep into that ocean, the more mystical and magical sci-fi, wonky, weird, wild, and woo-woo yep. that this life gets. Life becomes magic. And it's like, yo, like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I can talk with my ancestors and have like one of those avatar moments where I just look down a line of people and I'm like, what's up? <laughs> you know, like there's when you when you get downloads on to see how time is just weaved and interconnected and there's no such thing as like a linear modality of it yeah man like there's so many things that like life can really open up for you and transcend death that's the biggest thing if you Become lean into a it sense of immortal it, it, there's uh there's that recognition that like you said man you're greater than being just a human being like you're greater than whatever you could you can try to describe yourself as. <laughs> I like that. You're greater than what you could ever try to describe yourself as. Right. Checks out. <laughs> how do you describe? Well, how do you describe God? You truly can't. You can try, but you can't. You can. And, well, there's. I got to give shout outs to my friend Sarah. Um, Sacred Empress is what she goes by, but. She was telling, we were, you know, we would like to do some check-ins. I'd like to check in, you know, for those in the spiritual communities, check in with your peoples. Like we all go through things on our own and yeah. life can be, and life can be pretty shitty in this, in this light. Sometimes, you know, some parts of the film aren't tight and yeah. it's because we have yeah. to learn those lessons, but you know, we have a connection and network that we're all building. So reach out to your friends and loved ones. But like, it was the sense of we, we like catch up and she was telling me this little vision that she had um, in the astral from her and her, her connections with divine, you know, and it was a moment of negativity. And I'm sharing this in the sense of the, the message that God gave her was, Hey, you know, you're as much me as I am you. Mm. Little pat on the head. Here you go. Like type yeah. of shit, you know, like, but it's just that same essence of like folks, like, we truly have to embody that we are each the divine and that we are all cells of the creator. We are God. God is God. God is the creator, but we are all within that womb of creation. Mm -hmm. There's so much, there's so much significance with each and every cell within that sphere of life, because just as much as a cancer cell, if that goes awry and can and just outgrows itself, it just becomes a cancerous tumor and can and can interfere and destroy and kill the entire system. Each person's yeah, important. Good way to each put it. each being is so necessary. Don't be when a we cancer. really exact don't be a cancer, you know, <laughs> awaken to your power, like awaken to your divinity. Like that's truly what we're each tasked with. Yeah. Again, like, you know, remember how to be the gift you are, that divine gift you are. It all yeah, comes man. back to the same stuff, yo. And that's the path, man. Well put. <laughs> we're just remembering here. We're it's a never ending path back to our own divinity that we lost track of. And it doesn't get old. It's it uh -huh. makes life magical. The more magical life gets, the more magical no, I'm sorry. The more magical it seems, the more magical it gets. Yeah. The more that you can feel your divinity, the more divine it actually is. Ooh, I like right? that. The more godly that you feel, the more you become like God. You don't become all God. I'm glad you put it that way. Like you don't, you're not like the full Brahmin. You're yeah. not the full thing. But you, we are everything that. How do I put this? We're not all God, but all of God is in us. So everything that we are as a human being is God, but God's also greater than that. <laughs> yeah. So, well, know, it's like, that's yeah, what we're it's finding one, out. We're the one lens of the infinite. Like we're, we're one window of awareness to the infinite windows yeah. that there are. And that's the beautiful aspect of it. Cause like you can live like and obtain those states where you kind of give the you kind of give the primary viewership to Brahma. Yeah. Like you can't do that. But that takes away from why you were tasked to come here in this body. Exactly. 
Mm-hmm. And that's one of the, the, you know, the kind of spiritual paradoxes that we enter into in this world is that like, you know, we have so much, uh, I would say we have so much delusion based upon the very egoic nature of language. And I feel like I've mentioned this before mm-hmm. when we chatted where it's like mm-hmm. e- language itself is like the most egoic separate thing. Like it's all <laughs> individualized, but we have to come back to some type of common language to understand that, like, listen, like enlightenment, awakening, ascension, it's all the same thing, different check marks. You know, yeah. it's all the same. Like, there's no end game to awakening or ascension. When you think you're there, that's probably the biggest flag that you're not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Because I you used say to say, th- I am enlightened, then. No, this not. No, you, th- you can not. say, you can say the truth, like, I am self realized. Yeah. Like you have realized what is the basis of yourself. Yeah. Like that's a fact. Like that's an objective truth. Mm-hmm. And you could say that you're on a path of self mastery. That's also a fact. Like, because we're always in a process of becoming masters of the self that we were gifted with. Yeah. But like to sit there and say that, like, I'm this and this and that. Like, no. yo, that no. The ego. It's everyone. Every one of us is already awakened and enlightened. We just forgot. Yeah you know and i that's why i hate the language that we have because it's created a lot it's created more cul-de-sacs and it's created like actual pointers to the truth that's just language in that's in the um, structure of language to be honest with you i mean that's Mm -hmm. why sanskrit is is also in languages like sanskrit are more tied to the truth because literally in their vibration is the truth like literally their vibration the vibratory resonance of how it comes off is is more tied to what it represents when the words like through the English language, we have the subject object variation and the words aren't really closely tied to like the vibration of the, how would I put this? Like the, like the words, the meaning and what I'm trying to say here, and I don't know what it might be. I don't know, whatever it is like concerning these universal truths. Mm -hmm. um, There's no word, like there's no word for Brahman in English is what I'm trying to say. There's no ohm in English. I mean, this home, I guess, but there's no like, yeah, there's all of these mantras that we have in Sanskrit and other languages as well. English doesn't really do it justice. Like if you translate like certain things from Sanskrit into English, it just doesn't have the same sauce. It doesn't have the same, yeah. like, it doesn't feel the same. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's because I'm a native speaker of English, but I don't think so. I think that's just like literally there's some kind of reverse weird uh you know, black magic going on with English. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so to totally your words wisely. I don't totally. know. Totally. Hey man, I have to use the bathroom again. I don't know what's going on with me. So let's hold that thought. I'll be right back. Sorry. It's all good. A few moments later. All right. That's a record. That's a record. Usually I don't even go at all during these things, but twice in one session. That's uh that's something special. A lot of energy flowing through. Yeah, a lot of energy. A lot of prana flowing up. Oh man. What were we talking about? Language? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the sense of like English really is like a spell casting language. I feel yeah. like the re- the written aspect to like verbally how easy it is to speak versus sometimes how difficult it can be to write is like probably an intentional thing. But there's so, so much. Wait, say that again. Is how easy it is to speak? How easy it is to speak English yeah. in terms of like once you're already a list or like a, a native speaker or like Hard once you write, learn yeah. once you learn it, it's way different to write. You know, I mean, even speaking though, like how you have a bunch of different versions of two, like it can be super confusing, but yeah, I definitely have a strong intuition that English was created to be a very intentionally like spell casting language, mm. just of way, just of also how things resonate within the body when they're spoken upon. Yeah. But I definitely feel that there needs to be more of a study between like the, the impact of how language disconnected us on like that energetic level from source because of just like how saying things in certain languages and phrases like just has more of that heartwarming thing that like feeling to it that vibration and energy so Mm -hmm. yeah like linguistically it'd be very interesting to see especially like the native languages i would love to see a lot of more of like the sanskrits the native american dialect or like the native culture dialects all throughout the world Mm -hmm. Um, i just don't know enough about it so (laughs) yeah right. (laughs) but i'm super curious about it well, I imagine the further you go back, like the older the, the language is, the more tied it is to a sense of truth. Because think about it like this. What was the first language ever? There had to be one language, right? Yeah. If there was one tribe of humans, there had to be one language. And how they created their words was whatever, it wasn't how they were taught. It was whatever they resonated with. So a rock 
whatever in whatever they let's just say rock even though it, rock wasn't the word but they saw a rock and they were like rock because right that's, well, that's how it felt and then that, it's yeah like that's else. how it felt <laughs> i like that right because in whatever <laughs> other object it was like when you know whatever whatever came <laughs> in that moment they were like, and that stuck and that became language <laughs> so yeah. that also probably holds true to universal truths of our being right if they even thought about mm. that but at one point there was a, the first word for soul whatever yeah. that was in the first language or the first word for god whatever that, whatever that was in the first language so that's most likely tied to yeah. a sense of truth and at a vibratory level in terms of sound at first, at first was the word you know that's that's what they say right so in that i think in our language with the right vibratory resonance um, we can kind of unveil to ourselves a sense of truth and vibrate that, that sense as a sense of truth using the right terms. But I think our language is so far gone at this point, there's really no finding that. Maybe through Sanskrit. Yeah. Sanskrit's old. It's definitely one of the oldest ones, but it's not the oldest yeah. one. But if we could go back to like the first language, is that, if that's even a thing, or the first languages, yeah. it's probably a lot of truth. Like I was listening to this podcast by... Uh, you know, Aubrey Marcus, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And Matthias De Stefano, you know that guy? Yeah, yeah. Well, he he was explaining, and he could explain a lot better than I can, but he was um, explaining how the pyramids were built by sound. And we, we've heard that before, but mm -hmm. he said uh, it's due to because they... Okay, so let me try and explain this in a simple way. Back then, in the old, old Egyptian times... They were more tied to the power of language and the yeah. power of sound and the power of vibration in terms of yeah. notes and like how these notes hold resonance. And in these notes, if you've done it a collective way, if say everybody's singing a yeah. mantra, say om all at once, yeah. it holds power, vibrational power in that to literally change up physical matter because in yeah. that sound is the sound of that physical matter. So he said they literally, whatever that rock was, of like yeah. we'll say like a a, a block of for the right, pyramid, yeah. they somehow found out what the vibration of that block was, and through like they were trained in this, like they had schools of sound supposedly, and mm. through that, the through knowing how to resonate as a block, they became the block and were able to literally, um bend space and time by yeah, yeah. becoming the vibrational frequency of that block and build pyramids in that way and i'm just like that sounds crazy huh. that sounds far-fetched but it but actually, not really <laughs> it doesn't yeah but it actually doesn't it actually makes sense that actually makes a lot of sense because everything has a vibration like we said so if we could collectively resonate at these certain things and know that the pure whatever the pure resonance of said object is we could pr probably bring it into manifestation the thing is we're so far disconnected from the pure resonance of these objects yeah. like english doesn't have the pure yeah. resonance of book like yeah. book probably is not how book is in resonance you know what i mean it's yeah, probably yeah, not yeah. like book it's probably down to like uh physical matter like probably yeah, things like the earth that we can resonate at rather than like yeah. things that we created like through the material world. Ooh, that's you know an I mean? interesting yeah 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 that's an interesting look with it where it's going when you do look at the materials of the old very raw very very raw mineral like yeah like, like if we look at the um, straight stone block that would make a lot of sense in that yeah. light yeah like if we look at like in terms of crystals it's probably like that like can you vibrate at the same resonance as like crystal quartz and things that are of the earth and things on the periodic mm. table like they all yeah. have their frequencies in terms of like the amount of electrons and the amount of neutrons and the amount of pro i don't know i'm not a chemist but you know what i'm saying they have a yeah, certain yeah. structure and yeah. in that structure it's not actually a structure it's just a vibration it's just yeah. literally like just that's, an order of electrons and the charge and energy states yeah. that it like the capacity it carries is determines like its state of physicality and exactly yeah yeah, yeah. it will so, see this is where you get into like oh, all you it's, i was just gonna say so it makes sense at that level right if you see yeah. everything as a vibration and that there's no actual solidity to anything then yeah, that yeah. means you could vibrate at that and p potentially you know create from that well that's been the interesting thing when you look at all the different journeys that people have had on the different medicines and 
even in their own experiences with like ancestral things and shamans and that whole like um, more of the natural like ancient knowledge you can really see that sound has always been pitched to us as like our greatest tool of manifestation Mm -hmm. wherever you're at realm whatever entity being you're talking to it always comes back to like hey like you all's voice can like do things yeah. Like, let's Absolutely. teach you how to do things, sing this, do build like us, create like us. Like there's been a lot of random, like independent firsthand experiences of people being instructed to build with whatever they're like working with. And it's using their voice. It's them singing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I like the way you said that where it have to be like the materials that were like more of earth versus stuff that we've made. Yeah, Cause exactly. that's also, well, that's where it's also a curious thing where you look at like, you know, I look at like a phone. And it's like, you see like, what is this vibration always vibrating at that's Mm. impacting with my natural resonance and my natural field versus, you know, like what is my copper cup and water resonating at? Like, what is that changing? When I charge my water in the sun, how is that changing its resonance? Like, Mm. and this is where we start getting into the cool stuff of like some little personal experiments. I'll I'll open some, uh, some eyes onto, which everyone can try at home, especially if you've tapped into like these these more primordial essences of what we've talked about of the I am energy. And it's, sorry, my cat was just like yowling. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> it wasn't that loud. Your cat is just cute, but it's a, it's that sense of, we have to look at how our, I honestly forgot where I was at. I was so caught up in the flow. Uh, you're going to talk about energy, talk about your experiments that you did. Oh, the experiment. Time. Yes. Where we start talking about when you've tapped into that essence of like the, I am, you can start to do different things to like enhance your abilities. Right. So you can start to practice by blessing whatever it is you consume and give yourself the, the opportunity to do like mm. blind placebos with people and to experiment with yourself, like try biting into an apple and then bless it. And then bite into that same apple, you know, and when you're doing it really like, so I can, I'll explain my protocol. So like when I'm blessing my water, right. I bless like my big container of it, not just like I have my, I have my pitcher here. So I'll have water that's charged from like an artesian well, put that into there. I have my hand over the water and simply evoke the creator, the Christ, the source within I say that about four times internally until I really feel that light starting to just like radiate brighter. And then from there, I'm sitting there calling forth like the full love and light and potential of each and every atom of water. And I'm literally just like saying these things to myself, but envisioning just pouring in that love and energetically, you can feel a buildup in your hand. And then when I know the process is complete, it's almost like a, like a drop of water but it like encompasses like the entire object, but it's just like a, like you can feel an energy, like in from my hand, like go into the object, engulf the object. And then it's, Ooh, it's velvety. Ooh, it's sweet. Ooh, it's juicier. You know what I mean? Like, and literally trying to play with it. Like I, and again, I've like done these experiences with different people and some skeptics in my life. And when you see people's eyes be like, And then they take another sip and they're like, okay, whatever. Like that's wild. Like Mm -hmm. you see, you see the magic start to really come back into just that same pitch of like, oh yeah, it totally checks out. We have the ability just to like think and impact something physically, let alone use the actual like, like vocal cords, like our actual trumpet of sound to manifest, which all is vibration. So to me, I feel like that's one of the big, like the big things of like the tools that we've lost. And even then, like how our musical scales work, like all of this starts to really impact how we look at sound and vibration and energy of how like we really are so far off the mark. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, it's like, what was Tesla's Tesla made like that? uh, He was said to have made that little motor or generator. I can't remember what it was, but it was like something that essentially just changed the resonance or like match the resonance of like a, whatever material it was shaking with and it Mm -hmm. caused like a skyscraper to just like wobble. So it'd be that same, it would be that same essence of like, okay. So when we tap into it, like when an opera singer matches the resonance of a glass, that's when those sound waves can travel through that glass. And because it's a 
glass and the way it's shaped, it can't handle the vibration of itself intensified. So it shatters. But technically, if we created that and had an opera singer sing, could we create a, a glass structure that could levitate? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Like, mm. I think we could do, I think we could practically do more experiments like this on a community level because we're already seeing the the western science show that we can levitate things with sound and like even sound and water that creates like a really interesting experiment where like some people have generated light from that same essence so it's just like you can start to see like we're coming back into the ancient knowledge from a different understanding yeah. so we can really bridge the gap from the old to the new the east yeah. to the west so it's like again dude juicy time to be alive yeah man <laughs> yeah a whole new technology a whole new way to uh, view ourselves and when you when you see yourself all as one you see it this is just a giant one giant vibration with different layers different waves look at it as this is one giant ocean but the ocean has different waves yeah. everything everything is part of the ocean no matter what it is it could be a person it could be a book it could be a cup yeah. or a phone but it's all different vibrations and it may seem so different it may seem like this is not me. This is a different, this is a separate cup for me. But in actuality, this is just a part of me. This is a part of you. And mm. we can manipulate that in some way. I don't think we know the exact formula yet. Like we're getting there. We're, we're just scratching the surface of the truth of how we become alchemists to our world. We become alchemists to ourselves first. You can realize that that's possible. But then you realize that yourself extends beyond the body. And that you can also manipulate that. That's when you become the Jedi, man. And that's where <laughs> we're, going. we're going somewhere become be between like the Jedis and also scientists at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, bridging the gap between magic and science. That's the world we're going toward. It's it's like uh, it's something that we can't even imagine, to be honest. It's like no sci fi yeah. novel or movie has really ever. I don't think it's ever going to be able to like touch upon the world that we're moving toward. Because there's magic involved too. Like we're getting to a point where it's, I mean, it's magic to us now, but in the future, it'll just be as technology. All of these things that we're talking about, we'll be like, yeah, of course you can just become an alchemist and create and move and levitate objects with sound. That, like, <laughs> of course. How did you not know that before? It's so, it'd be so obvious to us. Like all of these things yeah. would be just so obvious to us. And I do believe that, man. I do believe that. Soon soon yeah. enough and i like how you said that like we're all becoming the jedi i mean really that's the truth right now where it's we're all entering into that path of becoming self-realized self-masters where it's just like when we continue to open up into that recognition of the divinity that is all then all the things that we hear about from the different monks and monasteries you know the rainbow bodies and going beyond those bridges by putting your hand into like a rock and having it melt and the different shamans and wise sages and people and beings of like the different cultures all throughout the world, having like their ancient ones or elders being able to levitate or yeah. being able to walk through trees. Like this is all stuff that we'll be able to come back into only when we really come to recognize where we're all coming from. Yeah. You know, and, and it's once we realize our position in the play, then only does the play really begin. Mm. and that's kind of where society like societal wise like we're all entering into and it's that reawakening into our personal sovereignty it's reawakening into that divine within each of us so then we can really cultivate that light to then create more and then through that creation it's going to show other people the way and it's like it's so wild when we really think about like five years ago from now to like right now like how much more approachable digestible um sought out for that all of this stuff is yeah that's so true five years from now it's going to be it's a different planet man we got to make consciousness cool man i think that's one of our things is you know we're here to make the the authentic conscious investigation mainstream yeah yeah because right now it's not cool per se i mean it's getting there <laughs> but it's getting not there. like it's not cool for some reason it's cool to be like miserable and like <laughs> thug and like be tough and like not be, into your be, an ad, be on a bunch of pills and a bunch of other yeah like crazy why is that cool that's coming from the cabal bro like if we talk exactly about, like, the lizard exactly. people like it's definitely that's where that's coming from that yeah. influence is coming from, from the shadow secret. the shadow is trying to control us for some reason but yeah our genuine like spirituality i was thinking about this the other day um people think like oh that gary guy 
he's he's spiritual man that's his thing or like that whoever that is insert the name here that they're just a spiritual person they're just that's their thing that's their what they're into let them do their thing just like somebody else is in the football or into you know writing whatever our hobbies are that's that's their thing right we say that but spirituality isn't just your thing or my thing it's our thing it's the thing it's not just something that is like a side thing but we do for fun because like we want to be hip and, and uh and edgy it's different you know no it's the thing every single human being it's the thing that should be cool for all of us it actually shouldn't even be cool 100%. because being cool is like being edgy <laughs> like oh it's, they're different like it actually should just be a part of our life like brushing our teeth is brushing our teeth yes. cool no because everybody does it so spirituality <laughs> should, should be the same exact thing it should yeah. just be like yeah that's just that's you might we might all have our different ways that go about it but ultimately like everybody should have this in their life i think that's Ooh. just what it means to be a human being it's the thing so i think yeah man eventually it is going to be cool it is going to be cool but from there then it's just going to become a part of us just like wearing clothes yeah. like the first guy that probably ever 100%. wore a shirt he was probably like whoa that guy's what's that guy doing he put something on on his on his, on his body that's kind of cool. And then another guy wore a shirt and then another guy put on pants. You know what I mean? Like, it's just going to become, <laughs> it's just something that's just going to be part of us because it is a part of us. That's what, that's yeah. what people like us and anyone that's listening or has listened this long uh, has come to realize is that this isn't something that we're doing that's new. It's not anything new. We're just no. figuring out actually how to be a human being <laughs> while doing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bringing the, bringing the bringing the knowledge and wisdom gained from the those in the temples and woods and monasteries throughout the the world, and bringing it into the applicable like real life scenarios now, where it's yeah. just like, hey, how do we do? How do you hold the light where you're living in a ridiculous scape of infinite amounts of suffering? Yeah, you know, it's like how can and that's kind of like where we're all tasked with right now is just be those lights all throughout the world, so like. Just shine. Just do you, boo. It's a it's a very big divine do you boo like season where, yeah. you know, recognize, like use the universe as the tool it is. Like look at what is taking you off your center in these times of harmony and balance and put the spotlight back on you. Like what what does it really mean to to live a life of love for yourself? You know, a life of love for others, a life of love of service, of compassion, of understanding, of play of rest, you know, like honoring every moment that we get to have, cause it's a beautiful gift. And maybe that's, maybe that's like the essence of what gets really passed through because there's always going to be different people's, you know, seasons of flavors of what they like to prescribe to in terms of like worship and praise, but maybe the essence and change that we just bring back in this world is not like the uh, a spiritual path or development for everyone but just the the knowing that hey love truly is what aligns with what it means to be a human being mm -hmm. so can we all just try to love more everything everything we do can we just try to love what we do a little bit more amen maybe that'll change it man <laughs> and then of course we're going to make all the institutional societal changes to make consciousness a, a little yeah. bit more yeah, because I'm right there with you, dude. Like, if we had the tools like this to really explore at a young age where it was like mainstream to be like, hey, like everyone should learn different forms of meditation, everyone should learn different forms and understand the different religions and where people come from and cultures. Like, if we really valued learning on all levels, yeah, I feel like that would like nip a lot of this stuff in the bud potentially because it's like you want to be the most well wound well-rounded person. And maybe that's what it is, like a society that's really based on educating. Not in a fruit because we're not in a society that's based on education now. We're in a society that's really based on entitlement and like how entitled can you feel by how many degrees can you get and how much can you be self righteous about that? Yeah, which is why we're in such calamity because it's like the worst good, it's like the worst gunas, it's goodness. We live in a very self righteous and entitled world yeah. where it's very self absorbed and what the opposite of self-absorption like the path that we all get led to is you know self-absorption leads us to moments or opportunities to become self-aware 
And once we become self-aware, it's all about unfolding that self-awareness, which leads us to more self-mastery, which leads us to another new thing of self-awareness and self-mastery. So it completely changes the wheel, mm. you know? And if we can create a society in a world where the essence and theme really is like having teaching and pushing people to be courageous and curious and compassionate, yeah. like, and to be like, maybe calculate a little bit more methodical, like, you know, conscious and or intentional. Like yeah. that right there, we'll stick with the alliteration so we can, <laughs> we'll stick with, we'll stick with consciousness on that one. But like, there's, there's a lot of subtle, but drastic ways again, that we can really change this place because I know when I reflect on my own journey, the most profound shifts of consciousness came from the most subtle of changes. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of what we have is right, but it's just like the subtlest aspects of it are wrong. That kind of like puts the dye in the whole big thing of water. It changes the color a little bit. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think it's just allowing kids to be able to stay curious. Yeah. Because our world doesn't want people to be curious. We get we get conditioned out of curiosity. And to show them at some point, hey, you're now old enough to function as someone worth creating damage and but also beauty so yeah. here's your rite of passage <laughs> you know yeah. like I, until i honestly I'll, I'll actually say this now until that we have normalized a rite of passage for everyone on this planet that's going to be a determining factor of how far we can take this magic yeah because what would that be what would it be a rite of passage for every human being a rite of passage for every human being well yeah, the well, first one is we're born <laughs> yeah. you know so but we have to treat it like that we have to give the oh, reverence yeah. to what this experience is you know when you're going through your teenage years women they all get one because they all get welcome to the red tent you know what i mean like they have one by life mm. technically mm. men we don't have mm. one some yeah. because you know we don't we really can't even say like a, um adulthood or is a thing until that's even accomplished you know but most of our like catalyst and rites of passage have been through immense amounts of suffering until we woke up to something deeper yeah. you know but we could have we could all avoid the trap of getting caught up because teenage years is when like the egoic stuff grabs a hold if it's not caught so like it's that teenage year is the sensitive time to really have something rite of passage wise for everyone where they just like, you just learn some real shit. You know, everyone just goes out in the woods and connects with nature. Like I know there's a few different cultures in the South, um, in Mexico and South America that like the, it's like teenagers, only teenagers do like Iboga. Um, but it's like, there there's a lot of a promise with that in terms of how much it rewires the brain for addiction and people yeah. going in that path. But they don't do it for that in their cultures it's a rite of passage for like the teenagers and they're fasting and just drinking a boga for like five days. That's a rite just, of passage. Damn. That's their rite of passage. You, you go through immense amounts of suffering and, and detachment from the body. Mm. And it resets you to be like, wow, there's a lot worse shit than the stuff I complain about. Like, <laughs> you know, or it's wow. like the, or it's like, you know, like we have, and it's one of the things that I really want to try to implement a change in is with how we consume plant medicines and the containers that we consume plant medicines in. Because for me, the way that I guide and instruct these meditation uh, journeys, we could say, or these meditation retreats um, are only with people that you have a love for, mm. whether a really good friend or a partner or yeah. someone in your life that you've known for a long time, because the, the depths of these modalities of healing are dependent upon your willingness and vulnerability. So mm. the, the more vulnerable that you can go, the deeper that you can receive the healing and the potential yeah. power of these healings from these different modalities and tools um, and medicines. And for me, I look at back at the ancestral ties of like, okay, I'm not having, I'm not going to have it be dogmatic. You know, I'm not, I'm very anti-dogmatic priest, shaman, that type of shit. But how do we bring back that ritual home cer to ceremony again, that like that real essence of compassion to it? Well, how did everyone do Aya and all these different medicines back in the day? You did them with your tribe. Yeah. You know, you did them with people that you loved. Like there is a beauty of having the ran the random coincidences of meeting soul family in group settings like that when you go to a place where it's unknown. But like in terms to really bring the integrity back to these medicines, to bring back that theme of love again, where it's like you have a love for another person. You know, so mm -hmm. it's like so it's a family again. It's a unit. It's a community. Yeah. You know, so it's not just people that you're like that you don't know that they may freak out that you're not aware of. It's like it's someone that yeah. you trust with your life already. 
Mm-hmm. And that's a deeper, that's a deep leaning that you can really dive into in terms of the, the power of the transformation, the healing, the recognitions, the downloads that all these things can provide. So like, I feel like whatever we're creating right now, all of it really needs to be in, in, in alignment with like what really means the most of the human experience. And it's always connection, which we can trace back to love. You know, our connection with source, our connection with earth, our connection with each other. Is there anything else you really need? Nope. All you need is love. (laughs) Love is all you need. (laughs) Damn, man. Beautiful, you know? Beautiful. I like that. Yeah. Creating, um, I mean, there's already people doing that for sure, but creating good framework for how to use plant medicines is definitely a rite of passage not might not be the rite of passage but i can see plant medicines being a rite of passage i felt like it was for me yeah when i when i first took a large dose of mushrooms i'm like uh i felt like i was i was inducted into a group i'm like oh okay i see (laughs) i get it now i see uh, oh that checks out (laughs) yeah it really just has to do with love getting back to it man i was inducted into some kind of wavelength of love i'm like oh that's that's love (laughs) <laughs> that yeah. is what people were talking about this is what love is yes it's, it's so powerful so yeah could you imagine that as a teenager no you know can you i mean again like i look at back at my like arrogant wild youthful self where it's just like dude like that's a humble check and again it doesn't even need to be a psychoactive medicine it could be one that literally just does something like um even like a combo like where it's just dials down the feedback of whatever the body is creating that gets you off your center and distracts you. Have you done For it? You- Combo? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I've never done yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and I did mine in, again, like the more like ways that I like to do my medicines if I do them, like it's in nature. So I was like feet in the river, had a fire to my butt. Like yeah, you gotta be in nature. I just water fasted for seven days and was just like, all right, let's do combo. <laughs> Did that. And like, it was wild. And like the clarity afterwards, I was like, it took the, the, the connectedness you have with life, like times a million that you get from like being on a water fast. Like it was just such a connectedness with nature and everything. Like it was almost like my body was probably feeling what all animals feel pure connection mm-hmm. with like nature. And I was just witnessing to it. Interesting. So it was very, yeah, it was very profound, but those are the types of things where it's like, it puts you through some suffering, humbles you, takes you out of your perspective of suffering. Cause all this crazy, like purging is happening that now the body is at peace and like a homeostasis where you have clarity, you know, mm-hmm. and it's a deep, cause it's a detox. Like you physically feel cleaner. So there's a lot of these different mes- medicines and modalities that we could in- incorporate into, into the youth's journey of growing that will bring them back into what it means to be like a human again, to yeah. not get so lost and caught up in the sauce. You know? <laughs> yeah. Amen. But we have to go through that. I feel like the, I feel like what makes the human playscape so beautiful is the fact that we forget because you really have to earn it here. You really have to, sh- you really have to show if you really love creator. If mm. you really love source, you will f- come back home. Like, yeah. but you have to go through whatever lifetimes until you figure it out. It's tough love. Yeah. And the fact we have so many people coming into this knowing now, and we have the internet where people can connect and it's like, Oh, you too, you too. I'm sure this is more than any of us have ever existed on the planet at once. Wow. That's a good way to put it. I've never thought about it like that. Yeah. Like, at least in our knowing of each other. And this is the coming together point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We can, we can, we can tap in with each other. Yeah, like it might have been like you were that one person for your tribe, you know, and you didn't talk to any other tribes. Mm. But now we're at a point where all of us can create this wild like net. I almost want to say like we're creating a grid. We're like all aligning with different vortex points and creating this like grid over like the planet. And that's like true. why that's why we're all sent to where we're at is because it's just like all right that's a pretty dark shadow y'all got to go to the cities all y'all <laughs> like we don't need you in the mountains anymore we need you down here like yeah honestly yeah makes sense wow that's so good that's so true yeah, man. it's collective shamanism that's going on yeah we're rebranding it it's the it really has to be like at least that's what i see as one of my soul missions is to to take the 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 authoritarian master serfdom type of shit out of 
spirituality where it's just like there is nothing above there's nothing below it's it's all the same selves Mm -hmm. and it's that reference where it's like yo none of us are god individualized that needs to be recognized we are all of the creator the creator is the backdrop to everything you can't have you without god but realize that we are not living through that one reference frame of totality and infinite omnipotency and omniconsciousness you know, but we have access to it. Mm, you know, exactly. we have, we have, we have what we can gain. We can go through the libraries and read what we need to. And that's funny too. Cause like, it brings back to what you're talking about with the, the Egyptian schools of sound is like, man, like they knew a lot back then, all these different cultures, like the Vedic cultures and the Indian cultures that knew about like multiple star systems, yeah, you know, you look know at that. ancient Sumer and them talking about like Sirius A and Sirius B and like when yeah. they shouldn't have known these things, it's like, oh, well, what did they say they did? Oh, they would meditate on it. Yeah. And so what are, what's that in the sky? That's pretty. Boom. Instant download of the universe. Just like, this is what it is. Zoom. Here's your astral body. We'll take you there. You know, like. Mm. Like, mm-hmm. bro, we're about to enter into some like movie shit. Like we're already talking about life feeling pretty cinematic, but like the stuff that I hear and see opening up for people is like our powers and abilities are just getting stronger. Mm-hmm. And we're just getting started. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Oh man. And we're still going. <gasps> right. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, we're still young and there's that's the thing that's so juicy about like this this path of life is that it it really does just every answer you get you got like so many infinitely more doors to explore. Mm-hmm. But that's the cool part where it's just like all right, what do I want to learn? Yeah, exactly. Stay curious. Stay curious. That's what it's all about. Oh, oh man. man. Wow. I don't know how we do it, man. I don't know how we just keep going for three hours. I don't, I don't understand. Me and you got this like weird flow, man. And this is like Easy. what the fourth, fifth time yeah. that we've done this. And yeah, I don't know. We just, I guess we just from the different shows. Yeah, dude. Yeah, we're on the same wavelength about stuff. But yeah, I, uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate your energy, man. This oh, cool. always, dude. I appreciate you, and thank you for the just even the shout out. Like, I, oh man, coming out of this show. We didn't even plan this. The the all white the all white look was just yeah. that's intuition on exactly, point. Man. This is divine um intervention right here. The white. It always is. is. <laughs> well, it's that it's a it's here to celebrate, you know, a hundred shows of like really of really game-changing material for people. Like and exposing <laughs> people that. to exposing people to a lot of different modalities of what it means to explore consciousness. And that's hella important nowadays, man. Like again, like I just want to put the highlight onto you because really it's important because there's so many people that everyone has a different lens and flavor. And how do we ever know what resonates with us unless we're exposed to it? Mm-hmm. So whatever you put out there, knowing that it's like, oh, this is gonna resonate with someone's soul, like life will present them that path to be stumbling into this coincidentally, you know, perfectly timed video for them in their life with the (laughs) wisdom and insights that they need with someone who has a perspective that they align with that. They're like, Oh, like how many quote unquote random videos I've seen, like, and even from doing events in public, man, like when you see, when you put things out there with life, you truly do get to witness the magic of how many people are being pulled to things and how different offerings and opportunities and connection and community are being like brought to people's laps. Yep. All that's happening to all of us. We're all being pulled. Exactly. And and there's things being brought to all of us. You just have to have the awareness and that's it. If you have the awareness and you'll, you'll see the signs. Awareness and appreciation. Yeah, man. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Juicy. (sighs) Well, you have any last words i think we could probably wrap this thing up but uh this was a great talk oh gosh man last words um in the era and theme of where people are at in society and for those especially who have made it this far in the listening just know that you are almost there people are going to be finally ready for you in the coming months and years It may seem super far out. It may seem like life has been super dark, but know that 
it's always the darkest before dawn, baby. It's like we were right around that curve before that slingshot into a future that is unknown, but know in your heart and trust that it will be guided by these higher frequencies of love and connectedness and community and compassion. But you have to be that Christ in the world. You have to really be that light. So my message and call to action to everyone now is just remember you're an elder in training. You're part of the SWAT teams. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, <laughs> Let's go, go, baby. <laughs> well said, man. Uh, yeah, thank you. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate these talks that we have. Let's keep oh, doing you, it. Keep doing our thing here. Keep doing Always. your thing. And uh, yeah, keep fighting the good fight. 100%. And, yeah, man. Uh, nothing else to say. Namaste. Thank Namaste, you. brother. Love you so much, man. Thank you so Thank much you. for the opportunity. Thank you all for listening. Peace out. <laughs>